Water burger. I think it's playing something now, but I feel like it's... Ah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, the, yeah. it's the nav sound. It's the, the microphone is not plugged in. We need to shoot. Do you want to sit in a car for seven hours, risk a flat tire, traffic, or highway construction delays? Fly direct from Laredo International Airport to Dallas-Fort Worth on American Airlines. From Dallas, you can change planes and take a flight to Tokyo, London, or even Rio de Janeiro. Now it's time for the Laredo Lemurs free game show. Laredo Lemurs Baseball is brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Driscoll Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Family Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Guerra Communications, HEB, iGadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony League, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Place, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, TAMU Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade Forty, Whataburger of Alice. And now here's Bill Harrington with the Laredo Lemurs Free Game Show. All right, good evening, Lemurs fans. Bill Harrington along with Cameron Songer coming to you live from Unitrade Stadium as the Lemurs and the Joplin Blasters get ready to play game three of this three-game set. The Lemurs are looking for a sweep tonight against the Joplin Blasters. If they're able to do it, that'll be the second sweep against this club this year. So the Lemurs will be able to put them away twice. Once up there in Joplin, the Lemurs picked up a sweep. And they actually, that was the very first time the two teams played against each other in team's history. And then they come down, back down here. They've already played one time here before. And now they're playing the second time here at Unitrade Stadium. And so far, the Lemurs are 7-2 and two against the Joplin Blasters in all the games that they've played off against each other. An exciting game last night for the Laredo Lemurs as both Greg Hawley and Nestor Molina pitched absolutely fantastic. Both guys were great up on the hill. The starter, Greg Hawley, for the Lemurs ended up going eight innings, giving up four hits, no runs. He walked two batters and struck out two. Nestor Molina also went eight innings. He gave up four hits, no runs. He didn't walk anybody and struck out seven. Neither of the two ended up being, getting a decision in the ball game last night. It was John Burbia who ended up getting the win for the Laredo Lemurs. And the relief pitcher, Victor Capion, ended up taking the loss for the Joplin Blasters. And we'll tell you how things went down as Devontae Richardson ended up coming up to the plate as there was no score as we headed to the bottom of the ninth inning. Devontae Richardson would be the leadoff man to get things going. Here's the 3-2 delivery. Swan and a ground ball over to the right side. Diving for the second baseman, Aaron Brill. Brill gets up quickly, throws to first base, and safe at first is Devontae Richardson. An infield base hit for Richardson as Brill going into shallow right center field to field that ball. Yeah, it was a good play there by Devontae Richardson to get on base. And really, he had to hustle down the first baseline, and he did a nice job. Richardson ended up going two for four on the day. The next batter, Dustin Geiger. 
would come up to the plate. And, you know, we're thinking Bunny. He did show Bun a couple of times, but he ended up getting hit by a pitch. So that so that sent Richardson over to second base and put Dustin Geiger over at first. So runners at first and second. And Dennis Phipps then stepped up to the plate for Laredo. And the pinch. Bunt shown. Bunted out by Phipps. He'll bunt it up to the pitcher. Capion will grab it and throw it over to first base. And that is a big surprise. Here's Indeed, it was a surprise for the Laredo Lemurs to see Dennis Phipps turn in and bunting. And manager Pete and Cavilla put the call on himself. We asked him after the ball game. And Cameron Songer talked to him. And he said, yeah, I sent in the bunt myself. And uh, Gibby Velaquear, the third base coach, relayed it over to Dennis Phipps. And Phipps was able to lay it down. So a nice job there by the slugger Dennis Phipps to lay down the bunt to move up the runners. Well, that put runners at second and third base in the bottom of the ninth inning for the Lemurs. Remember, there's no score at this time in the ball game. Well, Kevin Taylor would be the next batter. He ended up getting an intentionally walked. That way, the bases would be loaded for the defense for the Joplin Blasters with one out. So they had an opportunity to try to turn a double play if they got a good pitch or a good ball to turn a double play on. But Juan Silverio then came up to the plate, and he has been clutch so far this year. Here's the pitch. Swung in a line drive into right field. A base hit for Juan Silverio. Coming home is Richardson, and the Lemurs have won the ball game and walk off fashion here at Unitrade Stadium. The guys attack Juan Silverio over there between first and second base. And a celebration ensues. Yeah, Juan Silverio has come up big several times for the Laredo Lemurs with the bases loaded and in opportunities to help them get wins. He has been fantastic in that position. So the Laredo Lemurs take advantage of it last night. He comes up a bit big again here, driving a ball into right field and driving home to Vontre Richardson for the one nothing Laredo Lemurs victory. So to start the day today, the Laredo Lemurs have a record of 31 wins and 26 losses. They're currently three games back behind the Wichita Wingnuts. Wichita has already won their game today. They played a day game against Sioux Falls. So the Laredo Lemurs will either stay at three games back if they lose or they'll end up be uh, dropping a game if they end up losing. Or if they win, they'll stay three games back. If they lose, they'll go ahead and drop four games back behind the Wichita Wingnuts. Wichita is coming into town next, so the Lemurs would like to keep things right where they're at for when the Wichita Wingnuts get here. That way, the Lemurs, if they can sweep Wichita, they could be in first place. But first things first, they have to play the game tonight against the Joplin Blasters and try to take care of their business here against this ball club. So we talked to manager Pete Gavilla about last night's ball game, and here's what he had to say. All right, coach, a one to nothing walk-off win for the Lemurs against the Blasters tonight. What are your initial thoughts? Well, I mean, a win's a win, man. Uh, you know, their guy pitched very well. Uh, Holly gave us eight solid innings. Um, you know, Brebs came in in the ninth and did his job. And, uh, you know, fortunate for us, the ball bounced our way today. And, uh, you know, we had our guy. You know, uh, Juan's been just absolutely unbelievable late in games and driving and runs late in games. So uh, uh, we'll take this one and uh, move on tomorrow. Can you talk a little bit more about Holly's start? Pretty much lights out for those eight innings, and then the decision to take him out when you did. His pitch count wasn't that high, but I understand you know the ninth is is Brebia time. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you know, our guys in the bullpen know their roles and their jobs, and and Holly understands that. And um, you know, he did his job. Gave us eight solid innings. Uh, you know, even though his pitch count was down, you know, he's thrown a lot of innings and. Uh, we felt like, you know, tonight, you know, if we're, we're, we're tied or, or got the lead, it's it's going to be Brebbia. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to do that. You know, I feel like he's one of the best closers in this league. All right. For the first eight innings, I think four total hits for your team. Just one time you got a guy in the scoring position. Uh, what were your thoughts as that was unfolding in front of you? Well, Molina was uh, absolutely filthy tonight. I mean, he had all four of his pitches working, his changeup, his split. Uh, he was locating his fastball very well. Uh, he was very difficult to get to tonight, so uh, we're very fortunate to come out with a with a win tonight because uh, you know Molina pitched a hell of a game. All right, in the ninth inning started with the Richardson hit, Geiger hit by a pitch, and then Phipps laying down the sack bunt. Walk us through that ninth inning. Well, uh, you know, great hustle by uh, Devo uh, to first base, um, which obviously kickstarts any inning, and then uh, uh, you know uh, I was going to bunt him over because. Um, uh, Capion's pretty quick to the plate, and fortunately, you know, it, uh, it hit uh, Geiger. So we got first and second late in the game. Um, felt pretty good about KT and, and Juan Silverio, uh, you know, doing the job and winning the game for us. So, uh, you know, I, I asked Phipsy to bunt. I'm sure his eyes got really big when he saw the sign, but he got it done. And, uh, 
uh, Phipps is one of those great team players. You know, he never hesitated. He's going to do whatever it takes to help us win ball games. And, you know, that was a big bunt. And, you know, like I said, I felt pretty good that they were probably going to walk KT. And, you know, I felt very comfortable with Juan late in games because he's been money all year. Yeah, Juan Silverio, that, the big hit. Uh, again, it's, it feels like he's just been making a living doing that. Numbers haven't been, you know, all-star level, but late in games, it's something special about him. Well, uh, there's a lot of guys that get that nickname, Mr. Clutch, and there ain't no doubt that, um, you know, he has uh, been our Mr. Clutch all year. He's come up with some big hits late in games to help us win ball games. All right, looking forward to tomorrow, opportunity to go for the sweep. Uh, tell us about who you have going, how you feel about that against uh, against their lineup after uh, they weren't able to muster any runs tonight. Well, you know, um, you know, tomorrow's just another game. We'll enjoy this one for about another 20, 30 minutes, and we got to move on to tomorrow. You know, Henry's taking the hill tomorrow, and, uh, you know, and uh, you know they got a left-hander, Castillo, I think his name is, a left-hander we haven't faced before. So, um, you know, we got to go out and play good baseball again. And, uh, you know, we – we got to be the team that uh, makes all the plays and, and, and pitches well and scores some runs and, you know, try and win a game tomorrow. You know, it's not really about the sweep. It's just about winning another game tomorrow. That's Lemurs manager Pete Cavilla sitting down with our very own Cameron Songer. On the other side of the break, Cameron was able to sit down today with Ty Morrison. We'll have that interview coming up next. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to people wondering, L-I-T-E, that's how... Back here on the Laredo Lemurs pregame show, Cameron Songer here, joined by Ty Morrison. Ty, tell us about your baseball journey. How did you get here to Laredo? Um, kind of a long story. Uh, growing up, uh, we, I grew up in Virginia. We moved out to uh, Hawaii. Uh, for the uh, first semester of my senior year in high school, and then we moved up to Oregon for my second semester. Got drafted by the Rays um, in the 2008 draft, uh, spent a number of years in their system. Um, had uh, three surgeries over the past two years, one elbow and two shoulders, and uh, got released by the Rays uh, July 1st, and uh, Pete gave me a call. and. Uh, Said so, yeah, he had an opportunity for me out here, and and uh, here I am in Laredo, Texas. So, Can you tell us a little bit about getting that call from from Pete. And did, uh, were you driving at the time? I, I've heard some stories. Uh, no, I was actually uh, down down in uh, Port Charlotte. I I talked to my agent. Um, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do. I was I was kind of in shock and uh, didn't really know what I was going to do after that. Um, you know, I was trying to decide whether I wanted to wait around for a few days and and hear from other teams or. Or what? But um, yeah, after being hurt for two years and uh, spent a lot of time in training rooms and stuff, I just wanted to get back out on the field. And uh, Pete called me at this opportunity. Um, I talked to my parents about it, and for probably about a, a day. And uh, yeah, I was itching to get back out on the field, so I was I was like, uh, I called Pete, and I was like, Yeah, I want to come play for you out in Texas. So here I am. How are you liking it so far? Um, I like it. It's awesome, awesome group of guys. Um, a lot of fun. Um, clubhouse is pretty loose. Um, you know, it's yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, fun group of guys to be around. Um, the travels can be uh, kind of rough. I think I've only been on two road trips so far, but I think my my neck is still stiff and sore from the last one up in Iowa. But um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Good group of guys. So. Going back a little bit, you were drafted right out of high school. Can you talk about the decision to go pro rather than to college, and what were some of the challenges of doing that? Um, yeah, I, I signed a scholarship to go to the University of Oregon, and um, you know, with Coach Horton up there, um, coming from Cal State Fullerton, he uh, he's actually, uh, obviously one of the, the best coaches in, in college, and uh, you know, they had a, a good staff up there at the time, and uh, with the facilities and Nike and everything right there in Eugene. Um, I took my visit and I, I loved it there, um, but I mean, the opportunity, I don't know how many times you're going to have the opportunity to play uh, professional baseball, and this is what I've wanted to do, um, you know, all grown up since I was a little kid, so, uh, you know, to, to get a jump on that out of high school was uh, was something that that I wanted to take a look at um, right away, um, you know, and plus with the, the, the uh, when I signed my contract, uh, they had the uh, this college scholarship program too. So, I've uh, I've some scholarship money waiting for me uh, if and when I eventually decide to go back to school. So I'm excited about that. 
All right, so far this season you've played 14 games with the Lemurs, hitting 382 as a Lemur. What are you doing? Why are you so successful in this league right now? I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to be back out on the field and, and competing again. Um, that's that's probably the thing I miss most while I've, um, you know, been hurt the last couple of years is just being out on the field and competing. Um, you know, being at the top of the line on my job's kind of to try to get on base and, and steal some bases and, and cause some havoc and, um, you know, play some good defense and just do whatever I can to, to help the team win. Um, like I said, it's an awesome group of guys. I mean, you know, the pitching staff's going to throw strikes and, and uh, you know, we, we've been playing well. We think when, uh, when we string uh, good at bats uh, back to back and uh, up and down the lineup, we're a, we're a, you know, a good team and a, a tough team to beat. So. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot here. What's your favorite career moment? Any time from your baseball playing career? Ah, uh, shoot. Um, obviously getting drafted by, by Tampa Bay back in high school was, was pretty special. Um, shoot. Um, I don't know. I walk off. I had a walk off like I don't know a week or week and a half ago or something against. Or who were we playing? Who was that? An Amarillo. Uh, might have been Amarillo. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. You know, getting the the cooler and all that stuff dumped out on me. Um, I think that was my my second or third walk off. But in in recent memory, I'd have to say uh, that moment so so far. So. All right. Thanks, Ty. Best of luck to you tonight and the rest of the season. All right, that's Lemur center fielder, Ty Morrison. We're just about ready for baseball here at Unitrade Stadium. So we'll bring you into the stadium and coming up to the plate for the Joplin Blasters, it's going to be Michael Gonzalez. He's leading off playing shortstop. Batting second is Mitch Glasser playing second base. Batting third, Carlos Ramirez. He'll play over at first. Jake Taylor's working as the DH. He'll bat in the fourth spot. Omar Luna's the right fielder. He'll bat fifth. Henry Garcia, he's ready to go up on the hill. Get you the rest of the lineup here in just a moment as the pitch is on the way and it's in there for a strike. We're underway. Your game time today is 7.33. And game time temperature is a little bit under 100 degrees. It's at 98 degrees right now. The 0-1 pitch. Another strike on the outside corner. So Omar Luna in right, batting in the five hole. Batting sixth is Yasir Gomez playing left field. Aaron Brills at third base, batting seventh. Oscar Mesa playing center field and batting eighth. And Juan Medina, the catcher, the catcher, batting ninth. Here's a pitch, swung on, hit in the air, out to right center field. On the run is Dennis Phipps. Phipps will get into the gap and lean and make the catch. And that'll take care of Michael Gonzalez to start things off for the Joplin Blasters. So the Blasters start the day with a record of 30 wins and 23 losses. They're currently in second place in the American Association South Division. They're two and a half games back behind Wichita. The Lemurs start the day with, with a record of 31 wins and 26 losses. They're three games back behind the Wichita Wingnuts in the American Association South. So here's Mitch Glasser getting ready to step into the batter's box. Glasser starting the day batting 327 for his club. The pitch. And that one is right at the knees. A fastball in there from Henry Garcia to start things off to Mitch Glasser. So no score, just underway here at Unitrade Stadium. And the pitch. Breaking ball that misses very high. Your umpires for today's game. You have Marty Bauer over there behind the plate. Tim Creamer is at first base and Cody Lowe is at third base tonight. Lemurs wearing their camouflage tops tonight. The 1-1 pitch. Swung on and popped foul over to the right. That actually gets up into the stadium club here at the ballpark. And it actually bounces back down onto the field. So one ball and two strikes to Mitch Glasser. And a new baseball put into play for Henry Garcia. So a big game tonight for the Laredo Lemurs. They look for the sweep against the Joplin Blasters. And they try to stay within three games of the, of the Wichita Wingnuts. The 1-2 pitch. Swung on in a line drive. That gets between the shortstop and the third baseman. That's going to be into left field for a single. So Mitch Glasser gets his first hit of the, of the day and his first at bat. And Carlos Ramirez will be coming up to the plate for the Joplin Blasters. Yeah, Carlos Ramirez moving out of the four spot and batting in the three hole here tonight. Yasir Gomez was batting in the three spot yesterday. Gomez is batting down in the six hole this evening. So runner at first base and one down. The deal home. And that one is on the inside corner for a strike. The Joplin Blasters have hit into seven double plays in this series. 
So the Lamers would love to see another one right here. On the first day, when these two teams got together, back on Monday, the 0-1. That's a little bit low, fastball from Garcia. The Joplin Blasters ended up hitting into five inning-ending double plays. It was really amazing to watch. And two more double plays turned by the Lemurs in yesterday's ballgame. One ball and one strike. Here's the pitch by Garcia. That one swung on and grounded over on one hop to Silverio. He'll flip the second for one. Back over to first base. That's a double play. And that will do it for the Joplin Blasters. Eight double plays in this series turned by the Laredo Lemurs. We're going to go to the bottom of the first inning. Laredo coming up to the plate. No score. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to people wondering L-I-T-E, that's how you spell light? Which led to people thumbing through their dictionaries. Which led to, there's got to be a better way to look up words. Which led to the invention of spell check. Which led to better resumes, promotions, celebrations, and happy hour. Miller Light, we invented light beer and happy hour. You're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Do you want to sit in a car for seven hours, risk a flat tire, traffic or highway construction delays? Fly direct from Laredo International Airport to Dallas-Fort Worth on American Airlines. From Dallas, you can change planes and take a flight to Tokyo, London, or even Rio de Janeiro. With four daily arrivals and departures, American Airlines is sure to have a connection that works best for you. So avoid spending hours in the car or risk an accident on the highway or even a flat tire. Fly in comfort from Laredo International Airport. Visit AA.com for details and to book a reservation. Unitrade continues to provide solutions in foreign trade through a highly satisfactory customs brokerage service. Unitrade has quality trained personnel devoted to the highest level of customer service. For all your transportation, distribution, and consolidation needs, it's Unitrade. There's a reason why Popeyes creates some of the best tasting chicken in the world. We were born in New Orleans, Louisiana, the land of good fun and great cooking. Spicy flavor is a way of life in New Orleans, and everything we make reflects it. From our Popeye's bona fide chicken and handcrafted tenders, to our homestyle mashed potatoes with Cajun gravy and our soft buttery biscuits, everything we make is made with care and served up fresh. Only at Popeye's. All right, welcome back to Unitrade Stadium. Let's go and get the starting lineup for the Laredo Lemurs tonight. Ty Morrison leading off and playing out in center field. Devontre Richardson playing in left field and batting second. Dustin Geiger is batting third. He'll play first base. Dennis Phipps is in right field batting fourth. Kevin Taylor is the second baseman. He'll bat in the five spot. Juan Silverio, the hero from last night, will play third base and bat in the six hole. Ryan Ortiz will do the catching and batting seventh. Jay Udi Valdez will work as the designated hitter. He'll bat eighth. And Jared Medeiros is the shortstop batting ninth tonight for Laredo. So getting ready to step into the batter's box is our pregame guest, Ty Morrison. Ty Morrison batting a mighty 382 as he gets ready to step into the batter's box against a veteran, Alberto Castillo. Castillo, a left-handed pitcher. He'll throw home, and he throws a strike to get things going. No balls and one strike. A straight pitch that was 76 miles an hour on the outside corner. I'm guessing maybe a changeup. I hope that's not his fastball. The 0-1, a sidearm pitch, and that one is inside for a ball. That one also in the 70s at 73 miles an hour. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. See how much speed Alberto Castillo can put up there. The pitch swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes. Alberto Castillo has only made one start for Joplin so far. So he's only pitched in one game. And they beat Amarillo 4-3. to three, But he went five innings, giving up a run on five hits. He walked three and struck out three. Well, the wind hustling out there right now. You can see Castillo's jersey blowing in the wind. The 1-2. A breaking ball misses inside. So two balls and two strikes to Ty Morrison. Ty Morrison, his 10-game hitting streak came to an end last night. Two balls and two strikes. He ended up going 0 for 3. The pitch. A changeup called strike 3 on the outside part of the plate. So Ty Morrison will go down looking there to get things going. And so far what we've seen out of Alberto Castillo is all breaking stuff. Seems like he's an easy tosser up there that tries to hit the corners with his stuff. Devontre Richardson coming up to the plate. Well, Alberto Castillo is a former major leaguer, and we'll talk a little bit about that throughout the night. 
as Devontae Richardson takes a strike on the outside part of the plate. Richardson, a right-handed batter. Castillo, a left-handed pitcher. Castillo out of Havana, Cuba. Six foot two, 220 pounds. The 0-1 swung on in a liner into left field, a base hit. Richardson will hustle up to first base. He'll take his turn. He'll hang in there. And a base hit with one out for the Laredo Lemers. That'll bring up Dustin Geiger. So Geiger coming up to the plate. Went 0 for 3 yesterday. Overall, he's 2 for 8 in the series with a couple of runs scored. He had a home run in the first game of the series on Monday night for the Lemers. Lemers ended up winning that game 9 to 2. Last night, they slipped by Joplin, winning 1 0. It was a great pitching matchup between the two. Both Greg Hawley and Nestor Molina were on the money last night. It was so fun to watch. And the game got played in two hours. Here's the pitch to Geiger. That one is very high in a way. So one ball and no strikes to Dustin Geiger. Geiger, a former Cubs draft pick in the 24th round back in 2010. He was drafted out of high school. One ball and no strikes. Big fella down there awaiting his next pitch. Here it comes, and that one is swung on and missed. Another changeup. So a plethora of breaking balls coming out of the hand of Alberto Castillo. When he played in the big leagues, he played for the Baltimore Orioles and the Arizona Diamondbacks. One ball on one strike. A lead for Richardson over at first base. And the kick and the throw home. That one is high for a ball. Actually, excuse me, a late strike call there by the home plate umpire. Marty Bauer does take a sweet time behind the plate to call the strikes. I'm sure he gives a verbal, and then he gives us the sign up here. So, of course, we can't hear his verbal all the way back here. One ball and two strikes, and a toss over to first base, and Devontae Richardson back in easily. So if I pause waiting for the strike call or the ball call, I apologize in advance. But we might have to wait a heartbeat or two. And you can hear the wind howling out there right now. And is really hustling. One ball and two strikes. Richardson with his hands on his knees as he awaits for Castillo to come to the stretch. But now Castillo and the catcher, Medina, cannot come to a consensus on a pitch. So they're both going to get together and talk things over. Devontae Richardson, by the way, has 11 stolen bases on the season for the Laredo Lemurs. Geiger's ready to go. So is Castillo. He comes set at the belt. Now he'll throw over to first base and Richardson back in very easily. He was only a step or two off the bag. So not a huge deal there for Devontae Richardson to get back in. He extends his lead again. And it's a 1-2 pitch. Here it comes. Breaking ball. Swung on and missed. That actually was tipped into the catcher's gloves as the home plate umpire. So a couple of strikeouts for the two outs here in the inning. And Dennis Phipps coming up to the plate. No score in the game. We're in the bottom of the first. We'll see how Dennis Phipps handles the starting pitcher, Alberto Castillo. Dennis Phipps yesterday laid down a bunt in the bottom of the ninth inning. That was huge for the Laredo Lemurs. It moved runners up to second and third base. The next batter, Kevin Taylor, ended up getting walked intentionally. And then Juan Silverio coming up with a big base hit as a throw goes over to first base and back in again is Richardson. So a walk-off win last night for the Laredo Lemurs. And every victory down the stretch here is going to be big. And the pitch is swung on, hit well to left field, but right at the left fielder Gomez. Gomez reaches up over his head and makes the catch, and that's going to do it for Laredo. No runs on one hit, no errors on one left. We're going to the second, no score. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at LaredoLemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Core Business Solutions is a proud sponsor of Lemurs Baseball. Core Business Solutions services the 17 southernmost counties of Texas as well as areas of northern Mexico. They offer a wide range of high-tech solutions for businesses and organizations. Make Core Business Solutions your solution today. Tokyo Garden of Laredo is located at 2515 East Del Mar Boulevard and they serve the best sushi in town. 
Stop by Tokyo Garden for a quick lunch or a fancy dinner. Either way, you're going to enjoy our fine cuisine. Did you just get off work? Then come on by and check out our happy hour specials. Tokyo Garden, where you'll find the best sushi in Laredo. Right now, when you sign up for a Gold's Gym membership, you'll get tons of extras completely free. Confidence, free. Compliments from your co-workers, free. And the desire to wear tiny bathing suits, you guessed it, free. You'll be stronger with extras, and you'll be stronger with Gold's Gym. Know your own strength. Tiny bathing suit not included. Pro Mega Signs of Laredo is there for all of your printing and signage needs. We can be found at 1615 Jackman Road in Laredo, or you can reach us by phone at 956-723-2110. Again, that's 956-723-2110. If you need a sign, big or small, come to Pro Mega Signs of Laredo, where your print job is just around the corner. All right, back to action as we go to the top of the second inning. Jake Taylor, Omar Luna, and Yasir Gomez coming up to the plate for Joplin. No score as Henry Garcia retos the rubber for the Laredo Lemurs. And the first pitch from Garcia. That one misses outside. One hit for each club. Mitch Glasser picked up a hit for the Blasters. And the Devontae Richardson ended up picking up a hit for the Laredo Lemurs in their half of the first inning. Here's the delivery. That one is a little bit high. So Henry Garcia starts the day with a record of two wins and four losses. He has a 4.12 ERA. He has pitched in 16 games for the Laredo Lemur. Laredo Lemurs, and he's making his seventh start tonight. The 2-0, swung on, popped up, right field. Going back on the ball is Richardson. He's heading towards the right field line and going back towards the fence. He'll make a basket catch as he reaches the warning track. And a nice job there by Dennis Phipps to run that one down. One down, and Omar Luna coming up to the plate. Phipps had a long way to go, and he was working against the wind right there. The wind, of course, blowing out to left field here at Unitrade Stadium, so it's blowing through right. And Dennis Phipps... Had to go back quite a ways to get to that one. At first, he started heading towards the right field line, and then he had to start heading towards the fence. Into the batter's box now, Omar Luna. And the kick and the throw home. A strike on the outside corner, a fastball from Henry Garcia. Omar Luna starting the day batting 289. He's picked up 59 hits and 204 at-bats. And the 0-1 pitch, swung in a ground ball over to the right side. Jake Taylor will smother it. He gets up, throws quickly from his knees, and he overthrows. In fact, gets it by Dustin Geiger, and that's going to be an infield base hit for Omar Luna. So Luna reaches base on that single. It was a tough play there for Taylor. He had to go over to his left. He had to smother the ball, get up quickly and throw from his knees. So not an easy play at all and that's going to put a runner at first base with one down. Well, the play of the series so far has been the double play turned by the Laredo Lemurs. Do they have another one in their back pocket here? They have turned eight so far against Joplin in the series. No score in the ball game. We're in the second. Here's the pinch. Swung on and fouled away. Off to the left. So Yasir Gomez, the batter. And if you're watching the video screen, you can see that he's batting from the left side. He is a full-time left-handed batter. He is at a Havana, Cuba. He's batting 324 on the year. And the 0-1 pitch, a fastball low and outside. Ryan Ortiz behind the plate tonight for the Laredo Lemurs. He's the newest lemur on the team. No score in the ball game. Henry Garcia looks in and gets the sign. It's a lefty-lefty matchup for you. The pitch. Another one misses just barely outside. So make it two balls and one strike now to Gomez. Garcia coming off an outing when he pitched against the Sioux City Explorers. It was not a start, but it was kind of like a start for Henry Garcia. It was a continuation game from the night before that Garcia picked up. Here's the 2-1 pitch. That is high. So the Lemurs had a day off going up to Sioux City. They had a day off coming back from Sioux City. And they had four games up in Sioux City. And, of course, they have five starters. So they were able to work Henry Garcia in the continuation game because we started that game off in the fourth inning as this ball misses low and away. That allowed Garcia to pick up there and John Jones to start the regularly scheduled game that only went seven innings. John Jones, by the way, has been released by the Laredo Lemurs, and from what I understand, he's been picked up by Winnipeg. 
So a walk to Gomez. And runners at first and second base, and Aaron Brill coming up to the plate. So things get a little bit deeper here as a runner walks over to first base. Now Aaron Brill into the batter's box. Aaron Brill in yesterday's game ended up going 0 for 3. He's 0 for 5 in the series, and he sees a pitch miss low. A change up there from Henry Garcia. Garcia wants a new baseball. He says, that one doesn't have any change ups left in it. I want a ball that has some change ups. So Garcia holds the baseball behind his back as he looks in and gets the sign. Aaron Brill, six foot even, 200 pounds, and he'll swing here and poke one foul up the right field side. That one hugs the ground and will bounce off the sidewall, and Dennis Phipps will get rid of it for us. And so Garcia picked up that carryover game on July 17th, ended up going four and two thirds and only gave up one run on five hits. It was really, if it would have been a start for him, it would have been a nice start for him, even though he probably would have went a little bit longer. All he really needed to go was four and two thirds in that game. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Swung in and a ground ball over to the left side. Silverio will throw to Taylor for one. Back over to first base. A close play over there, but the Lemurs turn the double play. Look at that. The call of the day once again. The Lemurs turn two. They're out of the inning, and we're going to go to the bottom of the second. No score here. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball, home of the double play. For all of your vehicle collision repair and paint needs, there's only one place to turn. Mike's Paint Place. Mike's Paint Place has computerized color matching and digital imaging. They also do full frame and suspension repairs. Stop by and see Mike's Paint Place today at 6410 Polaris Drive in Laredo. In over 40 years, nobody's helped more families achieve the American dream of home ownership than Armadillo. In fact, Armadillo Homes has built more homes than all other builders combined. And there are reasons for this. Integrity, responsibility, service, and of course, quality. So if you're thinking about making the greatest investment in your life, think of the one builder who's dedicated its entire life to helping the Laredo family. Think Armadillo Homes, armadillohomes.com. Go Lemurs. Breakfast speaks for itself here at Whataburger. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be fresh. It's almost like when you're a kid and you wake up in the morning, you can smell mom cooking breakfast. I like their hash browns. So my favorite is the honey butter chicken biscuit. I like the taquitos. We have some fresh cracked eggs here. I like these pancakes because they're fluffy. <laughs> I really like the fact that you can get into Whataburger real fast and bring it on the go. We're cooking breakfast for you at Whataburger. We all know we can accomplish more when we're ready. That's why I've chosen Texas A&M International University. I want a four-year degree and the opportunities that it brings. TAMU has welcomed me and more than 7,000 students from around the world. TAMU empowers me to greatness, ignites my mind, and propels me to my future and my impact. Imagine the possibilities when you're powered by TAMU. Register now for summer and fall. Visit TAMU.edu and get powered. All right, coming up to the plate for Laredo, it's going to be Kevin Taylor, Juan Silverio, and Ryan Ortiz. The Lemurs have now turned nine double plays in this series. And Cameron pointed out that's now seven inning-ending double plays against Joplin in the series. Just amazing. Kevin Taylor into the batter's box, batting 293 on the season. Here's the pitch from Castillo, a sidearm pitch that hits the outside corner for a strike. So Kevin Taylor. Here at home this season, batting 234 for the Laredo Lemurs. No balls and one strike, but his overall average is 293. And the 0 1 pitch, another breaking ball swung on a miss. That was a changeup in there at 64 miles an hour. I don't think he's broken 75 yet with a pitch. That might actually work for him. Guys are so used to seeing 85 plus in this league, and then all of a sudden you have a guy up there on the mound throwing 65 to 75, and that's kind of hard to hit. Next pitch is another breaking ball, misses outside, and a lot of guys in the American Association, a big reason they are no longer an affiliated baseball is because they can't hit breaking balls. One ball and two strikes. The kick, the throw home. That one swung on and popped up and over us. So the count will stay at one ball and two strikes. You know, guys start getting to the double A level, and the pitchers at double A tend to have command of their breaking balls. They can get them over for strikes. The one, two, low and outside. And that's where a lot of these players end up getting hurt 
I'm not talking about just the lamers. I'm talking about players as a whole in the American Association and in independent ball. They end up not being able to hit those breaking pitches that are thrown up there and thrown for strikes. Here's a pitch swung on, popped up over to the right side in foul territory. The first baseman Ramirez and the catcher are going after it, and the ball is going to fall to the ground. Medina and Ramirez both in foul territory going for that ball, and Kevin Taylor will get another swing. No score in the game. Kevin Taylor was running really close to them. He was taking a big wide turn like he was going to round sec or first base. I'm not sure that the Blasters dugout is too happy about that. They might think there was some interference involved. Yeah, I did see Taylor take that wide turn out of the batter's box. In fact, he ended up running right where the ball ended up landing, but he was gone by the time the ball came down. Two balls and two strikes. And Castillo working out of the stretch. He'll throw home again. That one swung on and slashed into left field. A line drive for Taylor, and he gets a base hit. He's quickly around the bag, and he'll hang in there at first base. So Kevin Taylor with a single, the second hit of the day for the Laredo Lemurs, and that'll bring up last night's hero, hero Juan Silverio. Yeah, all the guys in the American Association hit the fastball very well. For the most part, I've, I've seen a couple of guys that can't hit the fastball, but I would say the majority of them can hit the fastball pretty well. But they have a hard time with the breaking pitches. And into the batter's box goes Juan Silverio. Let's see how he does with the breaking balls. Here's the pitch. Going on the pitch is Kevin Taylor. Now he has to get back as there's a strong throw down to first base. The second baseman, Glasser, flips back over to first. Sliding in is Taylor, but he's out. So really... Kevin Taylor got going, but got going late between first and second base, trying to steal the bag, and it was almost like a delayed steal, but it was a weird one. <laughs> so Kevin Taylor started the wheels of turning a little bit too late. He had to pull up and try to get back into first base, and he just wasn't able to do it. So a pickoff play, or a caught stealing, I guess they'll put it down as. No balls and one strike. And the pitch swung on and missed. So Silverio looking at an 0-2 count. So Taylor is out. 2-4-3 to three on the caught stealing. And there's one down in the inning. So Juan Silverio looking at a no two count with one out. No score in the game. Bottom of two. Lemurs and Blasters once again. Ninth game of the year between these two teams. Excuse me, the tenth game between the year that between the two teams this year. As the next pitch misses inside to Silverio. And the Lemurs are 7-2 and two against Joplin this season. And they look to tack on another victory. And the 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball swung on and missed. There's strike three. So two down and three strikeouts in the books for Alberto Castillo. Ryan Ortiz coming up to the plate next. Ortiz, the newest member of the Lemurs. He's one of the three catchers the lemurs are carrying right now he was a high draft pick by the oakland a's he was drafted in the sixth round was ortiz back in 2009 out of oregon state university well with the a's organization he posted a 242 batting average with 33 home runs and 170 rbis he sees a fastball here that hits the outside corner that was in there at 79 miles an hour so there's his fastball we finally saw it and it hits the clock at 79 miles an hour. Or oh, the speed gun, I should say. The next pitch, a changeup. Misses low. One ball and one strike. Still no score in the ball game between these two. Of course, we're only in the bottom of the second. Last night, it took him to the bottom of the ninth inning to get a run up on the board for the Laredo Lemurs. The 1-1. One -one. That one misses inside a little bit. The Joplin Blasters never got on the board. In fact, that was the very first time this year the Joplin Blasters have been shut out in a ball game. So they went quite a while before they got shut out. 54 games in the books. Two balls and one strike. So on their 54th game, they were shut out. The 2-1. Curveball. That finds the inside corner. That's a strike. Landed right at the knees. A 2-2 count to Ortiz. Ortiz has played for... The Laredo Lemurs twice, so he's only played two games. He's two for six so far. The 2-2 pitch, another breaking ball in the dirt, blocked by the catcher Medina, but it bounces over to his right. He'll have to pick it up. Nobody on base, so not a huge deal that it got away from him. Jayudi Valdez is on deck for Laredo. The Lemurs tonight 
playing in their 58th game of the season. So we're approaching 60 games on the year. I think St. Paul is approaching 60 wins. The 3-2. And that is high for a ball. So another base runner for Laredo. There's two downs in the two down in the inning. And J.U.D. Valdez coming up to the plate. In reality, St. Paul has 44 wins. They're 44 and 13 on the year. Still ridiculous. They are doing so, so good. And they're getting great, great crowds. If you weren't with us last night, we mentioned that they had a pillow fight last night in St. Paul. The world's biggest pillow fight. Everybody in the stadium brought a pillow. And they would unleash on each other between innings. I actually think they were given pillows. I think it was a pillow giveaway. Oh, they were actually giving them away. Even better, free pillows. Runner at first and two down. The pitch. Judy Valdez watches that one slip over the plate for a strike. It hits the inside corner. Very cool. Free pillows. I'm sure they took them home and put them on their couch. I'm sure it's not the nice kind of pillows. The kind you get at Walmart for two bucks. Yeah, I'm sure they're as cheap as possible. They might have a St. Paul Saints logo on them or the Pillow Factory logo. Whatever's up in St. Paul. The old one pitch. High and away. You know, it seems like every big city has that one guy that sells mattresses. And he does that funny commercial. And people go down and buy mattresses from him. That was probably the sponsor. J.U.D. Valdez, he's six for his last 35 over the last 10 games. So he's been struggling. But yesterday he picked up two hits, went two for three. The pitch swung on in a soft liner into right field. Moving back on the ball is Luna. He'll reach over his head. It almost slipped over his head, but he was able to make the catch. And that'll do it for the Laredo Lemurs. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. We're going to go to the top of the third inning. No score. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Since accepting technology is open for business in 1998, they have worked to establish solid relationships with their clients. They are set to maintain the highest standards of service and integrity and to perform work of only the highest quality, achieving client satisfaction on every project. They have attained these goals through a tradition of care and professional pride. They serve a wide range of corporations and small business franchises. Extending Technologies has the tools and expertise for any technical need that your business may have. Call us here in Laredo at 725-2654. That's 725-2654 for Ascending Technologies. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one-of-a-kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <laughs> When cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Hey, ¿tienes algo que celebrar? ¿Que le salió el primer diente a tu hijo? ¿Que tu abuelita aprendió a tuitear? ¿Que cambiaste tu cheque? La respuesta es la misma. Pues un carne sazo. No importa lo que estés celebrando, lo que importa es que lo celebres. Pues con un carne sazo de HEB. En HEB encuentras gran variedad de cortes a precios bajos y de buena calidad. Carne sazo. Carne asada con ganas. Solo en HEB. We'd like to imagine that if you're listening to this, it's on a radio in a backyard in between innings. The grass was mowed this morning, and the grill smells like heaven. And what do you know? Your friends just arrived with a 24-pack of Miller Lite, along with a few new friends to enjoy them with. Here's hoping we're right, and you're not just stuck in traffic. Here's hoping it's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. 2015 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right, back to action here as Oscar Mace is going to lead it off for Joplin. He'll be followed up by Juan Medina and then Michael Gonzalez coming up to the plate. No score. Top of the third inning. Henry Garcia doing a nice job again for the Laredo Lemurs. He's given up a couple of hits but has been able to get the double play ball to be his friend so far tonight. So two hits for each club and here is Oscar Mesa. Oscar Mesa batting 291 on the season. The late kick and the throw home is in there for a strike. That one placed nicely on the outside corner by Henry Garcia. So no balls and one strike. And he'll wind and throw one more time. And that pitch is outside for a ball. So another fastball there from Garcia, but that time he misses. It's the third and final game between these two clubs. And the Laredo Lemurs were, gonna, were 
We're going to be welcoming in Wichita tomorrow. The 1-1 one -one swung on, popped up over to the right side. Going for it, Geiger. Geiger by the railing, and it's going to be over the fence, out of his reach. Yeah, Wichita coming in for a four-game set, and that's the first-place team in the South. So four big games coming up for the Laredo Lemurs. Big games as well for Wichita. Matt Lucen's going to hit the hill tomorrow for the Laredo Lemurs. So looking for big things out of him. Here is the one-two pitch. Swung on and fouled away. So the count will stay at one ball and two strikes. Henry Garcia this season has given up 19 runs, all 19 of them earned over 29 and a third innings as a starter for Laredo. The one-two pitch. Curveball. That one drops in. Called strike three to Oscar Mesa. Nicely done there by Henry Garcia. Getting that curveball to drop over the plate for a strike. Here's Juan Medina, the catcher. Yeah, so Garcia has given up a lot of runs as a starter. That's over, those 19 earned runs are over 29 and a third innings. He has posted a 5.88 ERA, and that's been over six games. So he's looking to become a starter and to keep those runs down. He's doing a nice job here today. The first pitch is a fastball, misses away to Medina. So in contrast, or in comparison for Garcia, he made 10 relief appearances, and he did make a relief appearance in his last outing as he misses with the strike here, misses low. So he's made 10 relief appearances this season. He has thrown 16 and two third innings in relief coming into tonight, and has given up only four runs, and only three of them have been earned. The 2-0 pitch, swung on and missed, a fastball on the outside part of the plate. So as a reliever, his ERA is 1.62. So 1.62 as a reliever, 5.88 as a starter. Two balls and one strike. Garcia throws, and that one swung on. A soft liner into right center field that's going to drop for a hit. That's going to be the third hit of the day for the Joplin Blasters. And the first hit, of course, for Juan Medina. This is only his first at bat. So he'll drop one in in the right center. And Juan Medina now has eight hits on the season. He's only playing in his 19th game with Joplin. So we go up to the top of the order for a very tough hitter, Michael Gonzalez. Michael Gonzalez looking for his first base hit of the ball game. So kind of odd numbers there for Garcia. You know, the lemurs kind of thrusted him into the starting rotation. Here's a pitch that's... On the inside corner for a strike, Garcia, primarily a relief pitcher in his career and was thrusted into the starting rotation because the Lemurs needed a lefty starter. And we had two lefties down in the bullpen. Here's the 0-1. That one is high and outside. So Garcia did make six starts when he was in affiliate. I scratch that. He made, yeah, he made six starts, no, five starts when he was in affiliated ball. One ball and one strike. And the delivery, a curveball. So he has made starts as a professional in the past. But primarily he has worked as a reliever. So overall he's made 11 starts in his career. And he's had 102 appearances altogether. So do the math on that and you figure it out. Two balls and one strike. So he's trying to get used to being a starter again. The 2-1 pitch swung on and a ground ball foul over to the right side. And so far, so good tonight for Henry Garcia. At home this year, Garcia is 2-1 with a 2.36 ERA. That's through 10 games and 4 starts. He's given up 10 runs here, and 7 of them have been earned. 2 balls and 2 strikes. 1 out. Runner at first base. And the late kick on the throw home. That one swung on and fouled away again. So 2 balls and 2 strikes. Runner at first base, and one out. The Lamers could get another inning-ending double play ball. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> Can you imagine? You got the broadcaster from the Joplin Blasters here, Sean Teeman. I think he's about to pull his hair out. He's had so many, seen so many double play balls go against his team in this series. The 2-2 pitch, breaking ball in the dirt. Michael Gonzalez hops out of the way of that one, and he's going to act like he got hit. And I don't think the umpire is buying it. I'm not buying it either. I didn't see him get hit. <laughs> I think he's faking this one. 
So they're going to ask the other umpires to see if Michael Gonzalez did indeed get hit. And he's got a pretty good act going on right now. And no one's going to give in to the act. He is going to have to stay at the plate and take his swings. I didn't see it, says the home plate umpire. And Gonzalez is really milking it out there. The trainer out there talking things over with Michael Gonzalez. And he's heading up towards first base. I don't think he realizes that the call didn't go his way. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it did. The runner has moved up to second from first. There was not a sign made by any of the umpires. So they are going to put Michael Gonzalez at first. And manager Pete and Gavilla staying in the dugout. I don't have the best angle to be umpiring from here, but I thought the ball hit in front of the batter's box. Gonzalez is hit by a pitch, apparently. Allegedly. <laughs> we'll go with that. And we'll see if he tries to steal here. If they put on a double steal, I'm definitely not buying it. I'd like to see the replay, please. Into the batter's box goes Mitch Glasser. The first pitch to Glasser, a fastball away. So out of the starts for Henry Garcia, you try to nail down one that was really solid, and it has to be on July 11th against Amarillo. That was his last start. Here's the 1-0. Swung in a ground ball over to the left side. Silverio has it. He flips to second for one. Over to first base. That's a double play. <laughs> and it's starting to become comical. <laughs> the 10th double play turned in this series. And in this game, they've all been 5-4-3 double plays. All three of them have been inning-ending double plays. That is eight inning-ending double plays in this series. Absolutely amazing. The Joplin Blasters have got to be the beside themselves, and the Lemurs got to be cracking up. No score in the game. We are going to the bottom of the third inning. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. South Texas families never strike out with Driscoll Health Plan. Catch the value-added services we pitch to our Medicaid members. Enjoy a free membership to specific boys and girls clubs. Receive gift cards for completing Texas health care checkups. Restrictions and limitations may apply. Visit us at DriscollHealthPlan.com. Todos sabemos que podemos lograr más cuando estamos listos. Por eso, decidí matricularme en Texas A&M International University. Quiero un título universitario y las oportunidades que me brindará. Tammy U me ha recibido a mí y a 7,000 estudiantes de todo el mundo. Tammy U me impulsa a ser grande, enciende mi mente y hace mi corazón a ti. Imagina las posibilidades cuando eres impulsado por Tammy. Inscríbete ahora para verano y otoño. Visita tamiu.edu y sé impulsado. 3, 2, 1, number 1. That's Laredo's number 1 Chevy dealer. Family Chevrolet turns the best day ever into the best month ever. 15% off, not good enough, but 25% off, now that makes it the best month ever. With over 600 vehicles available, makes it the best pricing ever. 2015 Equinox, 2015 Traverse, not 15, but 25% off. And the best financing rates for the best month ever, 1.9 interest. Family Chevrolet of Laredo.com. Come see why the deals are always better at Family Chevrolet. Family Chevrolet is the number one volume Chevy dealer for a reason. Every customer rides during our spring cleaning closeout sale with massive price cuts on 600 Chevys. New 2015 Chevy Cruze. How about 25% off MSRP? Wow, that's huge. Or only $199 a month. New 2015 Malibu for only $269 a month. Or 25% off MSRP. Plus two years free maintenance and a 100,000 mile warranty. It's a spring cleaning closeout sale happening now at the number one volume Chevy dealer. Come see why the deals are always better at Family Chevrolet. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to fewer guys with beer bellies, which led to more women attracted to those guys, which led to dates, second dates, wedding bells, and honeymoons, which led to hubbada hubbada, boom, which led to you. Miller Lights, we invented light beer, and you, you're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right, into the batter's box for the Laredo Lemurs is Jared Medeiros. No score, bottom of the third inning. Alberto Castillo back up on the hill. Here's the pitch, and that is high and away to Jared Medeiros. So no score, three hits for Joplin, two hits for the Lemurs. And Castillo working out of the stretch the full time. He'll throw home. 
That one is a strike on the outside corner, a fastball there. Jared Maderos for the Lemurs, starting the day batting 205. He's one for seven in the series against Joplin. One ball and one strength. This is Jared's first at bat tonight. Lemurs looking to turn over the order here as the next pitch is a strike on the outside corner right at the letters. So here's a little bit more about Alberto Castillo, the starting pitcher tonight for Amarillo. He's only making his second start for the Amar for Amarillo for Joplin. He's only making his second start for Joplin. He pitched against Amarillo last time out. The one-two in the dirt, two balls and two strikes. So after being selected by the San Francisco Giants in the third round, Castillo began his career in the Giants organization as a first baseman. That was all the way back in 1994. Two balls and two strikes. He did pitch a few times that season for the Everett Giants in minor leagues, in the minor leagues. The 2-2 pitch, breaking ball, stays high. Three balls and two strikes now. After playing first base exclusively back in 1995, he was converted to a full-time pitcher the following year. So Castillo looks in, gets the side from the catcher, Medina. Madero's at the plate, looking at a 3-2 pitch. Here it comes. Breaking ball. Called strike three. And Medeiros goes down looking. Breaking ball hits the outside corner right at the belt to Medeiros. Not an easy pitch to deal with whatsoever. That's the fourth strikeout in the book tonight for Castillo. And we go up to the top of the order for Ty Morrison. Castillo played 1999 and 2000 with the independent team called the Schomburg Flyers. After the 2000 season, he was signed by the Tampa Bay Rays, but he missed the entire 2001 year and was released before the beginning of the 2002 season. So into the box is Ty Morrison, a lefty-lefty matchup, and a sidearm pitch misses inside for a ball. Castillo returned to the Independent League, signing with the Newark Bears of the Atlantic League of, the prof of professional baseball. And back in 2003, he was again invited to spring training by an MLB team. This time it was the St. Louis Cardinals. And once again, he was released before the season began. So he returned to the Newark Bears. The pitch swung on the ground ball over to the right side, backing up on it. The first baseman, Ramirez, he grabs it. He'll go over and touch the bag, and that'll do it for Ty Morrison. So two down. Devontre Richardson coming up to the plate. 2004, Casillo found himself without a major league team in spring training for the first time, and he started the 2004 season with the Atlantic City Surf. That's in the Atlantic League. He also played in the Mexican League a little bit after missing the 2005 season due to an elbow surgery. He played for the Atlantic League's Road Warriors back in 2006 and the beginning of 2007. He finished the 07 season with the Camden River Sharks. So Devontre Richardson into the batter's box. Two outs here. We're in the bottom of the third. No score. So far, so good in this one. The pitch. Curveball drops in for a strike. Well, he's got command of his breaking pitches, and that's pretty impressive when a guy can go out there and just kind of flip balls up there and have them hit the corners. Of course, he does have major league experience, and we'll get to that sooner or later tonight. If I don't do it, Cameron Songer will tell you about his MLB time. The 0-1, low and inside. That makes Devontae Richardson move his feet a little bit. So one ball and one strike to Richardson. And the kick and the throw home. Swung in a line drive in the left field. That's going to be a base hit. Richardson... With another single. He's got two hits in the ball game. He is two for two. So he doesn't care what's being thrown up there right now. He's just lining it. Alberto Castillo, by the way, started the 2015 season this year in the Mexican League. And he last appeared in the majors back in 2011. So let's talk a little bit about his time in the big leagues. Of course, always neat to run across guys that are former big leaguers here in the American Association. Happens quite a bit. He played with Baltimore back in 2008, 2009, and back in 2010 as well. And a toss over to first base, and Richardson's back in safely. So with three years with Baltimore, he ended up going 2-0 and in a 4.81 ERA over 62 games. He had one year with Arizona, the Diamondbacks. 
Here's the pitch to Geiger. Swung it in a ground ball over to the left side. Ranging for it, the shortstop, Gonzalez. He has it on the short grass out in left field. Geiger's going to beat it out. And it's going to be an infield base hit. And the Lemurs will have runners at first and second base. In fact, that's going to be the first runner that goes to second for the Lemurs in the ballgame. So an infield hit for Dustin Geiger. Gonzalez, the shortstop, ranging for that one deep into the hole, going towards the left field line. And he had to throw strongly over to first base. It wasn't that close. Geiger beat it out pretty good. So here's Dennis Phipps with runners at first and second. So the first season for Alberto Castillo in the majors back in 2008, he hit three eight or he put up a 3.81 ERA through 28 games. So 3.81, and the first pitch to Phipps is a breaking ball in the dirt, grabbing at Medina as Phipps has to hop out of the way of that one. the fact that Castillo was a 32-year-old rookie in Major League Baseball. You don't see that every day. No, you do not see that every day. That is absolutely right. And a good point there, Cameron. He was 32 through 35 when he actually pitched in the big leagues. He's 40 years old right now, so really not all that far removed from it. Here's the 1-0. A fastball outside. That one pegged in there at 79 miles an hour. We've seen him break 80 here a couple of times, but that's about it. Doesn't have a whole lot left in the speed gun anymore. But he's 40 years old. I'd be lucky to be able to throw 60 up there right now. <laughs> Here's the 2-0 pitch. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. And Phipps was th thinking long ball right there. You said five years, like it's, you know, he's he's not that far removed. That's a relative term for him, you know. Right. Five years in a 20-year career, that's, that's relatively nothing. For some of these guys, five years is longer than they've been professionals. That's very true, shot. yeah, you're right. Two balls and one strike to Phipps. A big situation here for the Lamers with runners at first and second base. So Richardson's at second, Geiger's over there at first. And Phipps up at the plate. And it says two balls and one strike on the scoreboard. And we'll go with that. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball swung, and that's fouled back. So two balls and two strikes now. Either way, the count is now correct because of the foul ball. So his overall career throughout four years in the big leagues, he put up a 3-0 record and a 4.33 ERA. Kind of amazing through 79 games, he only ended up getting three total decisions and not one loss. Pitching in 79 games, that's not easy to do. Two balls and two strikes, but of course, as a relief pitcher, you don't want to have any losses going against you and picking up wins. Well, that's just something that happens. Two balls and two strikes to Dennis Phipps. And so he never once worked worked as a starter in the big leagues. Of course, now he's working as a starter here for the Joplin Blasters. No score, bottom of three. Dennis Phipps at the plate. Now a big game of cat and mouse going on between the two batters. One will get on the river. Phipps will step out of the box, then Castillo will step on the rubber, he'll step out, and then Phipps will have to step out of the box just to relax. Two balls and two strikes. Let's see if a pitch is thrown here. Here it comes, and that is low. So Castillo did start his minor league career back in 1994, as I told you earlier, with the San Francisco Giants. He was with the Giants from 90 94, well, for 94, and then he ended up taken a year off due to injury, and then he came back in 1996 and then played with the Giants in 1997 as well, all in the minors. Here's a line drive down the left field line. That's going to be a foul ball. Just barely foul down the left field line, and that really could have done some damage as the Lemurs were sending Richardson and Geiger with two outs. Those guys were off and running with a 3-2 count. So they might have been able to score both. So Castillo, besides playing in the Giants organization in the minor leagues, he also played for the New York Yankees organization. We told you he played for the Baltimore Orioles team, so he did play in their minor league organization as well. And with the Arizona Diamondbacks minor league system. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runners will be moving again. Dennis Phipps looking for another big hit. He's got a little sway in the batter's box. He bobs back and forth. And Castillo... Sets just above the belt. 
He looks at the bases. He throws. The breaking ball swung in and a ground ball over to the left side. Michael Gonzalez has it. The shortstop will fling it over to first base, and that'll take care of the Laredo Lemurs. A 6-3 to three put out. And the Lemurs end up getting no runs on two hits. There were no errors and two left. We're going to the top of the fourth. We have no score. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Crowd at the bar making you sweat? Uh-huh. Could you use some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in epic nights, maximum refreshment, great times, awesome memories, high fives, smiles, Rocky Mountain refreshment, Blue Mountain refreshment, quadruple epic refreshment, killer parties, and totally refreshed killer parties. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <sighs> when cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Capital Care EMS, located at 1510 Kaida Norte Suite Number 11, invites you to experience a new standard in medical transportation. Servicing Laredo and all surrounding areas, Capital Care EMS provides transports to wound care treatments, HBO treatments, dialysis treatments, doctor's appointments, radiation treatments, chemotherapy treatments, and many more. From emergency medical transport to x-rays and lab work, our state-certified EMTs and paramedics are readily available 24 hours a day when you need them most. Capital Care EMS accepts most most major medical insurances, including Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, and many more. Capital Care EMS is locally owned and operated. Call now for your free consultation. 956-712-8911. That's 956-712-8911. Capital Care EMS. Creating a new standard in medical transportation. Capital Care EMS. The official ambulance of your Laredo Lemurs. All right, time for Cameron Songer to take over the mic. He's going to be with you for the fourth, fifth, and sixth. Let's see if he can turn any double plays for the Laredo Lemurs. Yeah, you know, I think it's only Juan Silverio who can do that, Bill. It'll be the middle part of the Blasters order. Three, four, and five do up this inning. Ramirez, Taylor, and Luna. They're just looking for some offense here tonight. They lost one to nothing last night, nine to two on Monday night. And trying to avoid those double plays. They've hit into 10 double plays so far this series. Eight of them have been inning ending. And all three innings the Blasters have come to hit so far in this game have ended with a double play. Henry Garcia's back on the mound. The lefty works on the third base side of the rubber. And he pitches, and this one will be laced into left field. A first pitch swing by Carlos Ramirez, and he deposits it into left field. He'll stand on first base with a leadoff single. So he hit into a double play in his first plate appearance. He looked up, saw the bases were empty, realized he can't hit into a double play this time around, and, and said, I'll get a base hit. He's hitting 291 on the season coming into tonight's game. He's now one for two. And the Blasters have the leadoff man aboard for the first time here tonight. He'll give way to Jake Taylor, the catcher, who will dig into the right-handed batter's box. As Garcia works out of the stretch, he comes home. This one's grounded down the third baseline, but foul. Silverio was ready to chase it down, and he was ready to perhaps turn another pl double play. All three double plays the Lemurs have turned have been 5-4-3, Silverio to Taylor to Geiger. All ground balls to the third baseman. A lot of right-handed bats in the Blasters batting order against the lefty Henry Garcia. He has some nice off-speed stuff that they get out in front of and hit down the third baseline. That's how you get those double play balls. Ramirez takes a pretty short lead off of first base. He doesn't have any stolen bases on the season. This fastball works its way inside for a called strike. So 0-2 the count to Jake Taylor. He's hitting 304 on the season, his sixth professional season, all of which were an independent ball. He's 28 years old from the state of California. Swings and hits this one foul into the net. That was an off-speed pitch there. And he kind of had to double pump on that swing. He definitely was off balance there. And if he had made contact and hit it fair, that might have been a double play ball. The Lemurs infield, middle infield is at double play depth. Maderos at short, Taylor at second, Geiger at first, and Silverio at third. That's your Lemurs infield with Ortiz behind the plate and Garcia on the hill. Top of the fourth and no score. Here's the pitch. It's swung on and missed for strike three. And Jake Taylor goes down swinging. It's the second strikeout of the ball game for Lemurs starter Henry Garcia. And there's now one away in the Blasters half of the fourth inning. I'll bring up Omar Luna, the right fielder. He has one of the Blasters' four hits so far today. He singled in his only plate appearance. That was in the second inning. 
Lefty on the hill, righty in the batter's box. Here we go. First pitch misses outside for ball one. So with one out, you've got to think the Lemurs are thinking double play once again. It's been money for them all night. And the Blasters, I think at this point, would take a strikeout so they could potentially end an inning without hitting into a double play here. Fastball. This one misses low and outside. 2-0. and oh. So Luna, Luna might be looking at something to hit here. He's a 28-year-old native of Monte Cristi, Dominican Republic. Played with four different teams in independent ball last year, including two games with the Laredo Lemurs. And then two weeks with the Amarillo Sox, and then two months with the Lincoln Salt Dogs. Fastball, this one's inside, called strike. Luna tried to dance out of the way and tried to sell it as nearly hitting him. Instead, it catches the just the corner of the plate. And then Omar Luna's fourth and final team of the 2014 season was the York Revolution in the Atlantic League. Two and one is the count. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. Tapped foul. Luna was way out in front of that. Just got a piece. So the lead continues to grow off of first base for Carlos Ramirez. As he was about a third of the way between first and second base as he saw that ball get hit foul. Makes his way back over to the bag. And we'll go again. Two and two the count. One out. Runner on first. Here's the pitch. High and inside. Ball three. Luna has just one home run on the season, 10 doubles, no triples, and 59 total hits. He's hitting 289. he He's been with the Joplin Blasters all season. From the stretch, here's the payoff pitch. Inside, or no, called strike three. He tried dancing out of the way. He was crowding the plate, and he will have a word with the home plate umpire before making his way back to the dugout. Omar Luna is not happy with that call. He goes down looking. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Henry Garcia. And the streak of inning-ending double plays will come to an end at three here this inning for the Blasters offense. There's now two outs. Carlos Ramirez stands on first. He led off the inning with a single on the first pitch. And to the plate now, the lefty Yasser Gomez. First pitch swinging, and he grounds it foul towards the Blasters dugout and out of play. Gomez is a 324 hitter. Hitting in the sixth spot tonight for the Blasters. He's 0 for 0 so far today. He walked in his only plate appearance. And on the series, he's 3 for 7 with a run scored and a run batted in. Here's the pitch. Fastball in there for called strike 2. The Blasters lost 9 to 2 on Monday night. In that game, Gomez was 2 for 4. He knocked in a run and scored a run. So he was involved in both of the scoring plays for the Joplin Blasters. Here's the breaking ball, and it misses low and outside. Garcia trying to get Gomez to chase, and he wasn't biting. One and two the count. Two outs, a runner on first. No score in the game. So we're in the top of the fourth inning in Laredo. Garcia comes set at the belt. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Swung on, grounded towards the shortstop. Played on two hops by Medeiros. He flips over to second. Taylor's covering. He taps the bag. And that's the third and final out of the inning. One hit and one man left on for the Blasters in the fourth. We're through three and a half at Unitrade Stadium. There's no score. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Catholic College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Kaplan College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Kaplan College does not guarantee employment or career advancement. Information about programs at www.kaplancollege.com slash consumer dash info. Today at Whataburger, we're cooking the Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. The chicken is hot and fresh. It's got melted Monterey Jack cheese topped with lettuce, tomato, bacon, and then the honey mustard adds a nice sweet flavor to it. All the flavors come together just perfect. I mean, not only do I want to eat it, but I keep wanting to look at it. The crunchiness of the bacon adds a really nice texture. Honey mustard and chicken just go together. You know, sweet and savory, it's a perfect mix. Try the new Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. Only at Whataburger for a limited time. 
Hey, Lemurs fans, every Thursday night at Unitrade Stadium is a thirsty Thursday. Come on out and enjoy cold Miller Lite draft beers for only $1. That's right, beer for a buck. You can get tickets online at LaredoLemurs.com or by phone at 956-7-LEMURS. I'll see you at the ball. Kevin Taylor to lead things off for the Lemurs in their half of the fourth inning. Juan Silverio is on deck, and Ryan Ortiz, the newest Lemur, is in the hole. That's five, six, and seven due up this inning for the Lemurs. As they try to figure out left-handed hurler Alberto Castillo, the 40-year-old, out there dealing. First pitch, swinging, grounded foul down the third base line by Kevin Taylor. Taylor's one for one today. He had a single to lead off the second inning and then was caught stealing. Kind of started running late, didn't get a good jump, got caught in a pickle and was ultimately thrown out. That was for the first out of the second inning. Castillo is making his second start of the season. His first of the season came on July 17th against Amarillo, a 4-3 to three Blasters win in which he went five innings, gave up five hits and one earned run. So he has a 1.8 ERA coming into tonight's game. Here's the pitch. Taylor takes it, and it misses inside for ball one. Nice night for baseball here at Unitrade Stadium in Laredo. Wind blowing pretty sharp from right to left. And the game time temperature was 98 degrees at 7.30, so it's cooling down. It's been a cooler night than it has been as that breaking ball misses low and away. Pitch count for the starter Castillo is up at 54. Whereas for Henry Garcia for the Lemurs, he has 52 pitches to get through his first four innings. Here's the 2-1 on the way. Swung on, grounded right back to the pitcher. S picked out of the air by Castillo. He corrals and throws over to first. A nice long hold he had there. He has a chance to stare down Kevin Taylor, saying, I caught this and now I'll flip it over to first and there's nothing you can do about it. So 1-3 to three on the put out and Kevin Taylor is retired. That was a hot shot back up the middle. But Castillo has a nice glove. Six foot two, 220 pound hurler from Havana, Cuba. You heard Bill talking about how he's been around for a while. He was a third round draft pick of the San Francisco Giants in the 1994 draft. He's old enough to be the father of some of these players for the Lemurs. Silverio at the plate, breaking ball, swung on, hit foul. And it looks like he might have gotten a piece of that and then the softly hit ball might have hit his foot. In particular, Jared Medeiros just turned 22. Alberto Castillo just turned 40. That's a pretty big age difference. Castillo's been playing baseball professionally for almost as long as some of these young Lemurs players have been alive. Some of the players in this American association in general. Average age in the American association, not the youngest league in independent baseball. The Frontier League has a 26-year old age limit as that fastball misses inside for ball one. You call it a fastball there for Alberto Castillo. It's 78 miles an hour, but hey, if, if I'm throwing that hard when I'm 40 years old, I'm doing something right. He's not making a living off of his fastball. It's his breaking stuff, his off-speed stuff that's keeping the lemurs off balance. Here's the pitch, swung on and missed. That was 70 miles an hour and didn't strike two on Juan Silverio. Silverio struck out in his first plate appearance. That was in the second inning as well. And in a similar situation here where you watch Taylor lead off an inning, ultimately making out, and now Silverio down to his last strike. Four hits for both teams, no runs on the scoreboard. From the windup, here's the pitch. Swung on, grounded foul down the third base line as Silverio was way out in front of that pitch. Silverio will walk a lap around the batter's box, make his way back in, rearrange some of the dirt in the middle of the batter's box, and it looks like we're set to resume. Ryan Ortiz stands on deck. He's the newest lemur catcher in tonight's batting order. He walked in his first plate appearance. Here's the 1-2 offering. Swung on, hit in the air towards right field. Retreating is Luna. He will camp out under it and make the catch. He had to kind of lunge for it at the last second. I think he was fighting off the lights. But he made the catch for the second out. Silverio will head back to the dugout. There's two outs, base is empty. And Ryan Ortiz making his way to the batter's box. Ortiz is 27 years old. This is his third game with the Leapers. He made his team debut on Monday night. So the Blasters are the only opponent he's faced in a Leapers uniform. 
He was 2 for 3 on that night, 0 for 3 in last night's one to nothing win with a pair of strikeouts. And he walked in his first plate appearance here today. First pitch, breaking ball, in there for a called strike. Ortiz is in another high draft pick, a sixth round guy out of the 2009 amateur draft taken by the Oakland A's. He played mostly catcher, but also some first and third. This one hit weakly towards the shortstop. Played on a slow roll by Gonzalez. The throw to first is in time. And the Lemurs go three up and three down in their half of the fourth inning. We're through four innings at Unitrade Stadium. No score between the Lemurs and the Blasters. Texas Inflatable Rentals has Laredo's largest water slides. We are proud to say that we serve the greater Laredo area and supply slip sliding fun for kids of all ages. Texas Inflatable Rentals has a huge selection of inflatables for every budget. And to add to the party, we rent tables, chairs, snow cone machines, popcorn machines, and cotton candy machines that will help take your party to the next level. We also have moonwalks and bounce houses. Contact Texas Inflatable Rentals at 956-436-3909 or at texasinflatablerentals.com and book with the coupon code LEMERS for a 10% discount. That's Texas Inflatable Reynolds, Laredo's largest water slide. Driscoll Health Plan loads the bases with value. We knock it out of the park with all the value-added services we bring to our Medicaid members. Driscoll families cheer on the Grand Slam packages, sports physicals, free memberships to boys and girls clubs, and dental care for pregnant women over 21. Take a swing at our baby showers offered by Cadena de Madre. Forget those peanuts and cracker jacks, root for our baby blankets and more. Come slide into home when you receive gift cards for completing Texas Health Steps checkups and attending postpartum visits on time. Don't miss a play. Restrictions and limits may apply. Visit DriscollHealthPlan.com. Looking to travel this summer? If the year-round flights to Las Vegas aren't fit for you, take advantage of Allegiance Direct flights from Laredo International Airport to Orlando. For as low as $119 round trip, you and your family can be in Orlando in two and a half hours. Fly in comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials. Texas Outlaw Grill is a proud sponsor of your Laredo Lemurs, specializing in outlaw delicacies such as the Texican, the Gringo, and the Bandit Hot Dog in their ever-famous barbecue burger. Be the first to try their groundbreaking Cabarito Hamburger and Cabarito Hot Dog. For all-to-go orders, catering, and fundraising information, go by 5209 Springfield Suite Number 4 or call 956-771-1919. Aaron Brill leads things off for the Joplin Blasters in the fifth inning. They'll send 7, 8, and 9 due up to the plate to face Lemur starter Henry Garcia, the left-handed hurler who's making his seventh start of the season for the Lemurs. Here's the pitch. Fastball just misses outside for a called ball one to Aaron Brill. Brill's making his seventh appearance of the season for the Joplin Blasters. He wears those high stirrups almost up to his knee. Nice classic look there for him, and that fastball also misses outside. Just a nice classic look all around for Brill. He's wearing the stirrups and the... Blasters wearing gray tops, gray bottoms with black numbers and just a simple black trim to them. Here's the 2-0 offering, and that one's in there for a strike. They also have black hats and black batting helmets. The lemurs wearing their camouflage tops, black lids with gold brims and white pants with a nice little black piping down the side. 2-1 and one the count to Brill as he leads things off in this frame, this fifth inning for the Blasters. From the windup, here's the pitch. Swung on, hit in the air to the right side. This is going to be playable in right field for Phipps. He gets the ball and makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Solid contact there by Brill. Just hit it to a bad spot as there wasn't a very long run for Phipps on that one. He had to go about 15 to 20 yards max. He's, maybe he was playing a little bit more shallow. He made it look pretty easy. Let's put it that way. Oscar Mesa will come up to the plate. He stands in the right-handed batter's box to face the left-handed hurler, Garcia. As Brill is now 0 for 2 on the day, he hit into a double play to end the second inning. We're talking about those double plays for the Blasters in this game. The first three innings all ended with double plays for Joplin. First pitch fastball misses outside. Corner of the infield playing as though Mesa was going to bunt. He sort of was leaning forward like he was prepared to try to lay one down. We'll see if he does so here. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Takes, and it misses high and outside for ball two. Something we're not used to seeing from Henry Garcia. He's falling behind a hitter. Again, the second straight batter. He's issued the first two pitches as balls two. 
Brill wasn't able to make anything happen out of it as he flew out. But that pitch count has stayed pretty low for Garcia. This will be pitch number 59. Here it is. It's in the dirt for ball three. Base is empty. No outs in the top of the fifth inning as the Blasters try to just take one out of this series for the lem from the Lemurs. Lemurs won 9-2 on Monday night. 1-0 walk-off win for Laredo last night. Here's the pitch. Catch the outside corner for strike one. A get-me-over fastball by Henry Garcia. Garcia started the season as a relief pitcher for the Lemurs, but made his first start on June 16th. Here's the 3-1 offering. It's in there for a called strike. Mesa had already flipped his bat back towards the Blasters' dugout and was making his way up the first baseline. Got about three steps out of the batter's box. And he'll get taunted by the fans here in Laredo as he has to make the walk of shame back to retrieve his bat. Actually, the batter in the on-deck circle, Juan Medina, came over and tossed it to him to save him a couple extra steps. As the umpire stares him down. Here's the payoff pitch on the way to Mesa. And it's low and inside for ball four. No doubt about that one. You see the umps extend the strike zone a little bit every now and then when a, they feel a batter's trying to show them up. But that ball nearly hit Mesa in the shin and can't really extend a strike zone that far. So Mesa will take his base, a well-deserved walk as he battled. Had a nice watchful eye there. Now Juan Medina will come to the plate with one out, a runner on first. Lemur's defense shifts, shifts to double play depth, and the first pitch swung on, fouled back into the backstop. Medina, looked like he gave a little kiss or saw a little nudge to the bat with his chin, or he might have just given it a little good luck kiss as he backed out, adjusts his batting gloves, and then steps back in. Baseball, you see some superstitious guys, so that would not surprise me. On Medina at the plate. That one was fouled off. So 0 and 2 the count. The runner on first is Mesa. It's Garcia. Works pretty quickly from out of the stretch, but got a new baseball. Took his time. Gets acquainted with it and now throws the pitch. It's swung on, grounded back to Garcia on the mound. He'll go to second for one. The throw to first is not in time. He's called safe. Medina hustling up the line. We were all ready to celebrate another double play. The Lemurs have already turned three of them to end innings in the first three innings. The fourth inning, Joplin managed to not hit, hit into a double play in that inning. And thanks to the wheels of Juan Medina, the Blasters catcher hustling up the first baseline. The Blasters avoided a fourth inning-ending double play there. So he stands on first base after the fielder's choice. Mesa is out at second. That was a slow tapper back to the mound. And a good aggressive fielding and defensive play there by Garcia to make the throw over to second to get the lead runner. Lineup turns over as the first pitch breaking ball called strike to Michael Gonzalez as the Blasters begin their third trip through the batting order. Gonzalez is 0 for 1, flew out in the first inning, and was hit by a pitch in the third. Right-handed hitter swings and hits this one foul into the backstop, and the count now nothing and two. Henry Garcia, not the biggest guy out there on the mound, six foot, 175 pounds, out of Brownsville, Texas. Played college baseball at the University of Texas at Brownsville, and was a kinesiology major. He's 24 years old, and that 0-2 pitch misses high, a late steal attempt, and the throw to second is not going to be in time. Juan Medina on the delayed steal. I think that caught the catcher Ortiz by surprise, and more importantly, there was no one covering second base until they saw that he was running, and there was a little bit of a delayed reaction there from Taylor and Medeiros. So Medina is now in scoring position after stealing second base. Ball missed high, so one and two the count, two outs. Garcia knows he's just one more pitch from getting out of this inning. Glances over his shoulder at the runner on second, now comes home with a pitch. It's swung on, grounded foul down the third base line. So Gonzalez, now with a new outlook here, suddenly can knock in a run. He has 24 runs batted in on the season in 52 games. He's a 317 hitter with four homers, eight doubles, and one triple. So he's capable of doing some damage at the plate. The Blasters so far have managed just four hits in four and two-thirds innings against Henry Garcia. Garcia will come set at the belt. He's looking over his shoulder at the runner. Now we'll come home with pitch. Swung on, hit back to short, played on two hops by Maderos. He gathers and throws, and he's out by a mile there at first base. 
So two base runners, one gets left on, no hits for the Blasters in the fifth. We will go to the bottom of the fifth. We're still looking for our first run in this game. No score at Laredo. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic, the official team doctors of your Laredo Lemurs. Now with two convenient locations to better serve you. Our north location is located at 9652 McPherson Road, Suite 12. Our south location is located at 5102 State Highway, 359. Laredo Sports Medicine offers an array of services from physical therapy to our newest service, orthopedic surgery. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic is changing orthopedic care one athlete at a time. Visit our website at laredosportsmed.com for more information. This summer, Allegiant will increase to four weekly flights to Las Vegas, Nevada. If gambling in Vegas isn't your thing, Allegiant is also increasing to two weekly flights to Orlando. Enjoy the Disney theme parks, Legoland, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, and the Kennedy Space Center. Flying comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials. Welcome to Whataburger. Today we're cooking the sweet and spicy bacon burger. Wow, it's beautiful. Two beef patties, American cheese, Monterey Jack cheese, bacon, grilled onions, the sweet and spicy pepper sauce. Sweet in the front and then the spicy in the back. I like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. So it's like a perfect balance and then that bacon right there, it adds crunchiness. I'd get back in line and get another one, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> sweet spicy bacon burger. Come down to Whataburger. It's only here for a limited time. The 8-9-1 and one do up this inning for the Lemurs, Valdez, Medeiros, and Morrison as they try to figure out Alberto Castillo, the 40-year-old hurler from Cuba with Major League experience. He made his Major League debut at the age of 32. He ends up playing parts of three seasons and last appeared in the majors in 2011 with the Arizona Diamondbacks. His career MLB stats... He appeared in 79 games, all in relief, when a total of 60 and a third innings pitched, had a 3-0 record, a 4.33 ERA, and struck out 48. Well, he played his age 32 through 34 or 35 in the majors. He's now 40 years old and a couple years removed from major league experience. He started the 2015 season in the Mexican League, and he's now making his second start of the year with the Joplin Blasters. Not every day you see a guy 40 plus out there on the mound, but Amarillo's Freddie Flores is another guy who's 40 years or older and a pitcher in the American Association. So they're out there. Judy Valdez at the plate looks at a first pitch breaking ball, nearly hits him in the feet, so he has to dance out of the way, and it's called ball one. Valdez is 26 years old. He's from the Dominican Republic. Joined the Lemurs on June 19th, so this is his 30th game with the club. He's a 245 hitter. He's in the DH spot here today. Also plays shortstop for the Lemurs. Four hits for both teams. No score in the bottom of the fifth inning as Valdez leads the inning off. Here's the pitch. This is outside. Can call out a fastball, I suppose. 76 miles an hour on the radar gun. On the pitch by Castillo. So 2 0 is the count. Val Valdez will be looking for something to hit here. Castillo comes set. He'll wind and throw. Fastball misses outside. 3-0. Starting to wonder if Castillo's getting tired out there. His first start and only start so far this season for the Blasters. He only went five innings, so you know, perhaps that was a precautionary move where they were worried about his pitch count. He gave up one earned run. He's going well so far today. Another fastball. This is a get-me-over pitch. A called strike as Valdez was taking all the way. That was pitch number 66 in this game by Castillo. So you wonder if the pitch count works a little bit differently for a guy who's 40 years old. How the, the management of that arm is any different. Longer, uh, more ice on the arm, an extra day of rest here or there. We'll see how he goes here in this fifth inning. 3-1 pitch on the way. Misses high, ball four, and the Lemurs get a leadoff base runner in the form of J. Udi Valdez and a five-pitch walk. He'll make his way over to first base. Jared Maderos will come into the batter's box, and he'll be looking for his first hit of the game after striking out in the third inning. Maderos was 0 for 3 last night, but 1 for 4 with a walk in the series opener against Joplin. Both of those Lemurs wins, 9 to 2 on Monday night. 
And last night, another low-scoring affair, and the Lemurs walked off, scored the only run in the ninth inning, and won one to nothing. Take a glance down the third baseline at the Blasters bullpen. Nobody throwing yet, but somebody out there stretching. So we'll see how much longer the leash, the leash is for Alberto Castillo. He might be aware of it and might try to take some more time in between pitches. I think he is keenly aware of how many more pitches are left in that arm here tonight. I'll take a long hold. Look at the runner over on first and scampering back is Valdez without a throw. The third baseman Brill is playing two steps on the grass, anticipating a bunt here by Medeiros. Here's the pitch. He shows bunt, pulls it back, takes a called strike. Brill was ready for it, and he figured he was going to be able to pounce on that ball and perhaps go to second and try to turn two on the bunt attempt. At the very least, they'd be looking to get the lead off run or the lead runner. Valdez, as he tries to advance to second base, Lemur's trying to small ball their way here with the bottom of the order at the plate, but an opportunity to take the lead in this game. Here's the 0-1 pitch. No, it's a pickoff throw over to first. Dancing back in is Valdez. The throw was offline. Ramirez had to come off the bag to get it. And we'll resume action. Medeiros digs back in. He's a 205 hitter on the season. Another pickoff throw, and back in standing up once again is Valdez. Medeiros is at the plate. He just wrapped up his senior season at St. John's University earlier in 2015. This is his 25th game with the Laredo Lemurs. He started his college career at the University of Miami. Also spent time at Santa Fe College. And spent the last two seasons of his college career at St. John's in New York. Swings and hits this one in the air. This is hooking foul, and it will get out of play down the third base line. As that bounces up over and onto the kids' play area on the net that separates the kids' play area from the rest of the stadium. It's for the kids' protection out there. There's a, a full playground. Great family atmosphere at Unitrade Stadium. I would highly recommend it. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. Another pickoff throw, and back in standing up once again is Valdez. 0-2 the count to Jared Medeiros. Another gorgeous night for baseball at Unitrade Stadium in Laredo. Lemurs in the middle of a seven-game homestand. This is game three, the third and final game of the series against the Joplin Blasters. The Wichita Wingnuts coming to town next. They'll be here tomorrow night. Another pickoff throw, and back in once again standing up is J.U.D. Valdez. This would be a situation where a, a bigger, more boisterous crowd would probably, you start to hear the boo birds come out. That's a lot of pickoff throws for a guy who doesn't really appear to be looking to steal a base here. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung on, hit in the air to the left field, and that's going to hook foul and into the Blasters bullpen. Look out there, guys. So Valdez was not going on the pitch, but he had made his way all the way over to second base in case that ball had somehow miraculously reversed course and made its way fair. Between the pull hitting of the right-handed hitter Medeiros and the wind blowing out to left field at Unitrade Stadium, it's hard for balls that are hit close to that left field line to actually stay fair. What you will see, however, is balls get lifted up over the fence as the breeze definitely blows out slightly. It's not straight out. It's slightly out and slightly towards the foul pole is the best way to describe it. It certainly can help a well-hit ball out to the shallow left field, or the not-as-deep left field. It's 325 down the left field line at Unitrade Stadium, 345 to right field. I think we've only seen one or two home runs to right field so far this season. Runner goes, the pitch is high and outside. The throw down to second is in time, and then they will finally tag him out. The initial tag missed, and sliding past the base was Valdez, Going back was Glasser, and he finally did apply the tag. So, J.U.D. Valdez is caught stealing. That was ball one to Jared Medeiros, but it wipes out the leadoff base runner for the Lemurs. And the Lemurs now 0 for 2 in stolen base attempts so far tonight. And the Blasters seemed to know that one was coming. There was a lot of pickoff throws by Castillo. And then finally with two strikes, that was essentially a, a pitch out. As it got Medina in a great position to throw the runner out. The 1-2 pitch is swung on and popped up behind home plate. Reading it and giving chase is Medina, but that will bounce into the seats about three rows back, and it'll be a souvenir for a lucky fan. 
as Jared Medeiros. He stays alive. But a good opportunity for the Lemurs. Is wiped out after J.D. Valdez is caught stealing. So now one out, base is empty, and a one and two count to Jared Medeiros in the bottom of the fifth inning. Still no score in this ball game, and both teams with four hits and no errors. A very symmetrical game. Here's the pitch. Misses low. Big breaking ball there. A lot of motion on that one, and it bounces in the dirt. Medina goes to a knee to stop it. Medeiros wisely lays off. So two and two now the count to the five foot eleven infielder for the Laredo Lemurs. Not a big strike zone, but he stands pretty vertical in the right-handed batter's box. Here's the pitch. Swung on, fouled off over the backstop, out of play, out of the stadium. New baseball delivered to Alberto Castillo. And this at bat wears on. He has definitely slowed down his pace out there on the mound. We hummed right along for the first three innings. Much like last night, a very quick start to the game, and then it kind of slows up as the game continues, as the teams realize that runs are going to be at a premium, and they need to approach every at-bat with a battle mentality. Two and two is the count from the windup. Here's the pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three. That is the fifth strikeout by Alberto Castillo out there on the mound. That's a definite improvement from his first start in which he walked three and struck out three in five innings. He's walked just one, or he's walked two so far in this game, but struck out five. And now has two outs. Base is empty in the bottom of the fifth. Lineup will turn over, and here comes Ty Morrison. Medeiros heads back to the dugout. He's now 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. That's the second night in a row in which he struck out twice. Laying down the bunt is Morrison. That's going to stay foul. As that pops up right near the plate. And it's caught in foul territory by the catcher, Medina. He thought he was in fair territory, but his back foot, I think, was still in foul ground. So Morrison might have gotten away with one there if he had laid it down better. Brill came charging in. He will make his way back over towards the infield dirt. He's right on the lip of the grass, and the count is 0-1 as Ty Morrison digs back into the left-handed batter's box. Lefty-lefty matchup. Morrison is 0 for 2 on the day, but he's hitting 382 coming into tonight's game. From the windup, here's the pitch. Off speed, swung on, hit down the first baseline, and just gets foul. That looked like it was bound for the corner. He had waited just a split second longer on that one, but Morrison, much like many of his Lemurs teammates, just out in front of the slow stuff by Alberto Castillo. You know, you're used to thinking of a a pitcher, a starting pitcher, a dominant starting pitcher who's blowing stuff by guys with the fastball that's in the upper 90s. This is just the opposite. He has guys just leaning out in front because his stuff is so far off speed. Here's the 0-2. Swung on, reached at, golfed, and that's going to drop into shallow left field for a hit for Ty Morrison. So Morrison with the two-out single. Nice piece of hitting. He went opposite field, and he is now on an 11-game hitting streak. Check that. He had a 10-game hitting streak come to an end last night. He had been on a hitting streak. We were watching it. And he's just been hitting so well, it feels like he's getting hits all the time. He's still a 382 hitter coming into tonight's game, as I mentioned. This is just his 15th game with the club. He joined the Lemurs on July 6th. And now how huge is that J.U.D. Valdez caught stealing? He could have just remained on first base, let Madero strike out. And Morrison, if he had singled like he did there, Valdez could be standing on second. Instead, Devontre Richardson comes to the plate with a runner on first and two outs. Richardson looks at a breaking ball, called for strike one. Richardson's a very good hitter. He brings to the plate a 354 average, and he's already two for two today with a pair of singles. This is not the guy Alberto Castillo wants to see in the batter's box right now. The runner on first is Morrison. He's a threat to steal, but I don't think they're going to try to take the bat out of Richardson's hand. Here he goes. It misses high. The throw down to second is not in time. It's on a line, but sliding in safely is Morrison. That is a cannon of an arm by Medina. Wow. That was a laser. Morrison got a great jump, and the count is 2-0 to Richardson. 0-2, oh excuse me. So that was a called strike. I thought that was going to miss high by the way Medina shot up out of his stance, ready 
to throw out the runner. So a stolen base for Morrison. He's now in scoring position for Devontre Richardson. Lemur's living on the edge here. Glancing over his shoulder is Castillo. He'll come home with the pitch. Misses low and inside. Richardson's still alive. One and two the count. So the Lemur's looking to strike first in this game. They have a runner in scoring position for the second time tonight. Richardson stood on second base back in the third inning after he was singled over by Dustin Geiger with two outs. Well, the Lemurs weren't able to make anything happen with Dennis Phipps at the plate. Now Richardson at the dish. He's already two for two. And can knock in the go-ahead run here in the bottom of the fifth inning. We're scoreless at Unitrade Stadium. And a much slower game than last night, which went two hours even and saw the Lemurs walk off one to nothing in the bottom of the ninth. Richardson does have 27 runs batted in in 48 games this season with the Lemurs. Did spend some time on the disabled list earlier this year, but there's no doubt he's back. 1-2 pitch, swung on, popped up. This is going to stay in the infield. Second baseman Glasser is called off by the first baseman Ramirez. He squeezes for the third out, and the Lemurs not able to make anything happen. No runs on one hit and one man left on. We will go to the top of the sixth. There's still no score. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to people wondering L-I-T-E, that's how you spell light, which led to people thumbing through their dictionaries, which led to there's got to be a better way to look up words, which led to the invention of spell check, which led to better resumes, promotions, celebrations, and happy hour. Miller Light, we invented light beer and happy hour. You're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You want to sit in a car for seven hours, risk a flat tire, traffic, or highway construction delays? Fly direct from Laredo International Airport to Dallas-Fort Worth on American Airlines. From Dallas, you can change planes and take a flight to Tokyo, London, or even Rio de Janeiro. With four daily arrivals and departures, American Airlines is sure to have a connection that works best for you. So avoid spending hours in the car or risk an accident on the highway or even a flat tire. Fly in comfort from Laredo International Airport. Visit AA.com for details and to book a reservation. Unitrade continues to provide solutions in foreign trade through a highly satisfactory customs brokerage service. Unitrade has quality trained personnel devoted to the highest level of customer service. For all your transportation, distribution, and consolidation needs, it's Unitrade. There's a reason why Popeyes creates some of the best tasting chicken in the world. We were born in New Orleans, Louisiana, the land of good fun and great cooking. Spicy flavor is a way of life in New Orleans, and everything we make reflects it. From our Popeye's bonafide chicken and handcrafted tenders to our homestyle mashed potatoes with Cajun gravy and our soft buttery biscuits, everything we make is made with care and served up fresh, only at Popeye's. Well, we're celebrating here at Unitrade Stadium for the second night in a row. Someone has thrown the red French fry in the Whataburger container, winning them free Whataburger for a year. The Whataburger French fry toss is one of the fan favorites. It happens after the fifth inning here at Unitrade Stadium. Just one of the many fun promotions the Lemurs have. Pancho the Lemur is fired up. He also gets involved in a lot of the, the fun activities that happen in between innings. There's the musical chairs. There's the uh, get dressed relay race. All kinds of good stuff that you get to watch on the stream in between innings. They put up on the video board. Mitch Glasser to the plate. Henry Garcia on the mound. Shows bunt. Pulls back. Takes a called strike. As so we are underway in the top of the sixth inning. It'll be two, three, and four. Glasser, Ramirez, and Taylor do up this inning. Between those three, two total hits. Glasser's one for two. A single in the first and grounding into a double play to end the third. Here's the pitch. Taken for a called ball. One and one. Is that missed just a little bit low? No score in this one as the Lemurs and Blasters wrap up their three-game set. Garcia, the left-handed hurler, winds and comes home. This one swung on, fouled back. That will get over the club level seats and into the parking lot. And the count now one and two to Mitch Glasser. This series started with the Lemurs looking up in the standings at the Joplin Blasters. That's still the case, but the Lemurs have won the last two. And the difference between these two teams is now just half a game. From the windup, here's the Garcia offering. Swung on, fouled off into the net. The count remains one and two. Coming into tonight's game, Joplin has a record of 30 and 24, and Laredo 31 and 26. They both trail Wichita in the South Division. 
The Wingnuts are now 35-23 and 23 after a win today, but they are in the hunt for the wild card. Kansas City is 30-22. and 22. This one swung on, grounded foul down the third baseline. Another foul ball here by, by Mitch Glasser. So he's still alive. Glasser's in his second professional season, his first in independent ball. He's 25 years old from Chicago, Illinois. Played at D3 McAllister College in St. Paul, Minnesota. Swings and hits this one down the first baseline. This one's going to hook foul into the picnic area. Another foul ball there by Mitch Glasser. He is really making Henry Garcia work here for the first out of the sixth inning. Garcia's pitch count right now is at 76. And the count for Castillo, the Joplin starter, is at 82. So we'll see if he gets a sixth inning of work. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung on, fouled off to the right side and into the seats. Another foul ball by Mitch Glasser. He's a 327 hitter, and he's only struck out 18 times in 159 at bat, so he's not going to go down without a fight. Glasser's in just his second professional season, but he looks really good out there at the plate. His first professional season was in 2013 with the Bristol White Sox. Swings and hits this one to third. Silverio backhands the long throw across the diamond. It's a one hopper. Geiger picks it out of the dirt and it's out number one. What a defensive play there by Juan Silverio. And a nice job at first by Dustin Geiger. That could very easily have been bouncing up the right field wall, up the first base wall, out towards right field. If Geiger wasn't able to get to it. That's why you got to be flexible at first base, kids. You got to be out there and do those stretches. Especially if you're going to play first base. You see in the major leagues, some big guys out there who play first base, especially in the National League where you can't hide them at the DH spot. First pitch misses inside to Carlos Ramirez. Even if you can hit really well, you still have to field the position. Dustin Geiger did that there, and that's why there's no runners here for the Blasters. This one swung on and fouled off into the net, which evens up the count at 1-1 one and one to Ramirez. Ramirez is a former eighth-round draft pick in 2009 out of Arizona State University. He was taken by the Los Angeles Angels. He began his pro career in 2009 with the Orem Owls. Spent all of 2010 with the Cedar Rapids Colonels. Moved up two levels in 2011. Here's the 1-1 pitch. This is outside for ball two. Went from the Inland Empire 66ers to the Arkansas Travelers, and then played with the Travelers for all of the 2012 season and for much of the 2013 season before going to independent ball in 2014 with the Lemurs. Skies this one to shallow center field. On the run is Morris, and he will get to it and make the catch in shallow center field for the second out. That one was headed for no man's land and finally was caught by Ty Morris, and then the relay throw back into the infield gets away and trickles over to Dustin Geiger. And you know, Don't look at that. Kids, don't be watching that part. That's not how you throw a ball back into the infield. So two outs, and that brings up Jake Taylor with the bases empty. And still no score in this game. Top of the sixth inning. We have another pitcher's duel underway at Unitrade Stadium between the Lemurs and Blasters. Here's the pitch. Swung on, popped up behind home plate. This one looks like it's going to get out of play, and it's about seven rows back in the seats. Bouncing around. It's a nice catch by a fan there off the ricochet. That bounced up off the stairwell. It looked like it caught the underhang of the club level seats, and then someone with the quick hands able to make the catch. Garcia will wind and throw. Here's the 0-1 offering. Swung on, tapped back up the middle. That's going to get through into center field, as that was right between the shortstop and second baseman, as that rolled almost directly over the second base bag. It's a two-out single for Jake Taylor, his first hit of the ball game, and with two outs, the Blasters have their fifth hit of the night. It's Taylor's second hit of the series. He was, two, he was one for his first seven this week after going 0 for 4 Monday night, 1 for 3 last night. He's a 304 hitter coming into tonight's game. He'll stand on first base. And Omar Luna, the number 5 hitter, is at the plate. He already has a hit tonight. He's 28 years old in his third season in independent baseball. Swings at the first pitch, grounds it past the shortstop and between the third baseman. And that gets into left field. Back-to-back -back singles on back-to-back -back pitches for the Blasters. Don't look now, but they have a runner in scoring position. Two outs and a pair of singles, and Yasser Gomez to the plate. And 
he'll have a chance to make something happen. Both teams still looking for the first run in this ballgame. And the Blasters out here trying to avoid getting swept by the Laredo Lemurs and avoid getting passed in the standings. Second place in the American Association South Division is on the line here tonight. An all-important positioning in the wildcard race. Three divisions in the American Association. Four teams make the playoffs, the division winners, plus the best remaining team, the wildcard. First pitch, fastball misses low and outside to Yasser Gomez. If the season ended tonight, the Wichita Wingnuts would win the South Division, and the Kansas City T-Bones out of the Central Division would win the wild card. Fortunately for both of these teams, the season doesn't end tonight. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Swung on, grounded, towards short. It's playable. Long throw across the diamond. Geiger reaches, and he's got it. Out number three by a half step on the 6-3 putout. And Medeiros was deep on the infield dirt there to make that throw and just did get it there in time. Blasters get two two-out singles, leave two men aboard. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth. Still no score in Laredo. Chavarria's Plumbing, the number one choice for any plumbing problem. Chavarria's is a full-service company with up-to-date technology trained professionals. With over 30 years of service to the community, Chavarria's is still growing strong. Visit chavarriasplumbing.com and go lemurs! Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at laredolemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Core Business Solutions is a proud sponsor of Lemurs Baseball. Core Business Solutions services the 17 southernmost counties of Texas, as well as areas of northern Mexico. They offer a wide range of high-tech solutions for businesses and organizations. Make Core Business Solutions your solution today. Tokyo Garden of Laredo is located at 2515 East Del Mar Boulevard, and they serve the best sushi in town. Stop by Tokyo Garden for a quick lunch or a fancy dinner. Either way, you're going to enjoy our fine cuisine. Did you just get off work? Then come on by and check out our happy hour specials. Tokyo Garden, where you'll find the best sushi in Laredo. Right now, when you sign up for a Gold's Gym membership, you'll get tons of extras completely free. Confidence, free. Compliments from your co-workers, free. And the desire to wear tiny bathing suits, you guessed it, free. You'll be stronger with extras, and you'll be stronger with Gold's Gym. Know your own strength. Tiny bathing suit not included. Pro Mega Signs of Laredo is there for all of your printing and signage needs. We can be found at 1615 Jackman Road in Laredo, or you can reach us by phone at 956-723-2110. Again, that's 956-723-2110. If you need a sign, big or small, come to Pro Mega Signs of Laredo, where your print job is just around the corner. For all of your vehicle collision repair and paint needs, there's only one place to turn. Mike's Paint Place. Mike's Paint Place has computerized color matching and digital imaging. They also do full frame and suspension repairs. Stop by and see Mike's Paint Place today at 6410 Polaris Drive in Laredo. Bottom of the sixth inning and someone please score some runs in this game. Laredo won the first game of this series 9-2 over the Blasters. Last night, it took till the bottom of the ninth, and the Lemurs scored a walk-off win, 1-0. And we've got another low-scoring affair here tonight between the Lemurs and Blasters. Heart of the order coming up this inning for the Lemurs. 3-4-5, and five, Geiger, Phipps, and Taylor as they face the 40-year-old hurler Alberto Castillo. He's a left-handed pitcher with some major league experience. He didn't break through until he was 32 years old. Pitched parts of three seasons at the major league level. Last pitching in 2011. He'll wind and throw to Geiger. And that one misses low and outside for ball one. Geiger has a 308 average on the season, but hitting 250 as a Laredo Lemur. He will lead things off in the Lemurs for in the sixth inning. Swings and misses at this one. He was out in front of a changeup. Actually, that measured 77 miles an hour. That might have been a fastball. Alberto Castillo, he's 40 years old, and his pitch count is up in the mid-80s now. This is his second start. His first start lasted five innings. If he gets an out here, this will be five-plus swings and tops this one foul. Looks like that one might have bounced off the shin of Geiger or the shin of the catcher Castillo. 
Looks like Geiger's fine, so we'll say it bounced off the catcher. How about that? One and two is the count to Dustin Geiger. As Castillo is ready to continue working. And it's fun to watch him warm up in between innings because he's out there just soft tossing. You know, he's just trying to keep the arm loose. He's saving every last pitch in his arm for game action. Here's the one two. Breaking ball misses low. That one seemed to take a while to get to the plate. 69 miles an hour on that pitch. Now as the lemurs are well through their third trip through the batting order, you think they might have timed this guy up a little bit better. We'll see what they're able to do here. Here's the 2-2 offering. Swung on, tapped foul down the third baseline and into the Blasters' dugout. Geiger stays alive. So Geiger started this season with the Wichita Wingnuts, played in 33 games, hit seven home runs, knocked in 28 runs, and had a 351 batting average for the 23-year-old. Joined the Lemurs on June 28th that, in a trade that sent Omar Ben Cuomo back to Wichita. He initially started the season with the Wingnuts. And Wichita is the next team to come to Laredo. They'll be here for four games starting tomorrow night. Two and two is the count. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses high and outside. Count goes full to Dustin Geiger as the wind really starting to pick up. It's the gray jersey of Alberto Castillo really rippling in the wind. The wind blows from right to left at Unitrade Stadium pretty consistently. That tends to favor right-handed batters like Dustin Geiger. Coming set at the belt, Castillo will wind and throw. This one swung on, grounded foul, and right into the Blasters' dugout once again. So Geiger stays alive. That was pitch number 89 by Castillo. This next one will be number 90. The 40-year-old left-handed hurler still going strong out there on the mound and not much action in the Blasters' bullpen. He's just going to keep going. Three and two is the count. Base is empty. As Geiger leads off the sixth inning for the Lemurs. Breaking ball swung on. Hit a mile in the air. This one's going back. It's hooking foul. If it's fair, it's gone, but it's foul. That was pretty close. Uh, judging by the reaction of Gomez, it's hard to see from up here in the press box what's going on in left field. Gomez didn't really give much chase towards that one. He basically ran towards the left field foul pole and then continued running into foul territory towards the wall that separates the picnic area from the field as opposed to the fence that would make it a home run if it was hit over that fence ran towards the stands like it was going to be a foul ball and then it bounced back towards the field of play like it was pretty close to the foul pole so Geiger makes his way back to the plate we'll do it again here's the pitch swung on hit in the air towards left center field this one's definitely playable Mesa on the run in the shallow gap and he makes the catch the center fielder nearly had to go to a dive and a roll to make that one but does make the catch Geiger made good contact there with two strikes he really saw the ball well, and you'd like to imagine if he had one more crack at Castillo, he's thinking home run. So he makes his way back to the dugout. There's one out in the lemurs' half of the sixth, and Dennis Phipps to the plate. He is a dangerous hitter. Castillo needs to watch himself. He's at 91 pitches now. And the one thing about not being a power pitcher, about not being a guy who thrives on blowing pitches past guys, is you, you know when the pitch count gets higher, your stuff doesn't necessarily be as affected as much. Big breaking ball. This one misses low and inside on Phipps for ball one. Geiger's back in the dugout. He's now one for three. Phipps is 0 for two. Pretty rare to see him go 0 for three. He was 0 for three last night. He definitely wants to break out of the slump. 0-1 pit or 1-0 pitch is swung on, fouled over everything and out of play. He evens up the count at one and one. So Phipps was three for four with two runs scored and one run batted in on Monday night in the nine-run, 17-hit explosion for the Lemurs on Monday night in that win against Joplin. It's been quiet since. You know he'd like to get rolling once again with a big swing to give the Lemurs the lead. He's thinking home run. You can tell by the way he's waving the bat over his shoulder. Has a sway in his hips, a bend in his knee. The 29-year-old hitter from the Dominican Republic digs back into the right-handed batter's box. Castillo winds and throws. This one misses inside. Fastball as Phipps moved his hips out of the way. We know, though, that doesn't mean much. 
these hitters like to crowd the plate, and sometimes they'll do that to try to sell a call to the umpire. Sometimes that's called a strike. So two and one. One out, base is empty, no score, bottom of the sixth inning. From the windup, here's the pitch. Phipps takes, and it's a called strike. Off-speed pitch. Just does catch the outside corner. Dennis Phipps, a guy with Major League experience, facing Alberto Castillo, a pitcher with Major League experience. Well, Castillo played in parts of three seasons. Phipps had 10 total at-bats. Here's the 2-2 offering. Swung on, laced back up the middle. This is hanging up there, and it will be caught by the center fielder, Mesa. He didn't have to move very far on that one. So Phipps is retired. Two very well-hit balls, but both caught in the outfield. And now the base is still empty. Two outs, and Kevin Taylor, a left-handed hitter, comes to the plate. One more thought on Phipps. He appeared in eight games with the Cincinnati Reds in 2012. He's trying to get back to the majors. Alberto Castillo at 40 years old. I don't think he's going to make it back to the majors. So two guys with major league experience facing off. The pitcher wins the battle. But Phipps might win the, uh, the ultimate battle and end up getting more major league experience. First pitch misses low and outside to Taylor. That's the reason these guys are playing. I mean, for most of these guys... You know, especially the young guys, they're trying to get picked up by an affiliated club and ultimately make their way up to the majors. But some of these guys who are in their late 30s, early 40s, they're playing for the love of the game. Breaking ball, catches the inside corner, strike one. One and one the, the count now to Kevin Taylor. Taylor's one for two today. He singled in the second inning and then was caught stealing. One of two lemurs to reach base and then get caught stealing. Swings and hits this one foul. That one looked like got a nice piece of the catcher there. Overall, the Lemurs are one for three on stolen base attempts against the Joplin backstop Medina. After that foul ball, the count one and two on Kevin Taylor. Alberto Castillo still showing he has gas in the tank. The 40-year-old pitcher, one out away from finishing a sixth inning. This will be pitch number 100 for him. What an outing it's been. Can he get the out, or can the lemur start a rally? Here's the 1-2 offering. Swings and tapped foul by Taylor. He just barely got a piece of it. As it trickles to the backstop, new baseball will be delivered. And Taylor stays alive. From the windup, here's the pitch. Swung on, grounded down the first baseline. That stays fair. It's dropped by Ramirez. He knocks it down. The race to first base. He's not in time. That was nearly a massive collision. Taylor able to run on the inside part of the baseline. Ramirez tagging the outside part of the base. And Taylor is safe at first base. Whew. That just makes your heart skip a beat there as those two guys sprinting up the towards the first baseline. We'll get a mound visit here by Carlos Lascano, and I think that's it for Alberto Castillo. They're not going to let him finish this inning. He was on a pitch count. And that was pitch number 101. Let's see what it is. Lascano puts his arm around the 40-year-old pitcher's shoulder. The whole infield is in there. They might just be trying to buy time. I'm not sure the Blasters have somebody who's actually ready to go yet. Lascano's going to make his way back to the dugout. Castillo's going to remain on the mound. So two outs, a runner on first. After the infield single by Kevin Taylor. He stands on first base. Juan Silverio at the plate. He was last night's hero. Delivered the walk-off single in the bottom of the ninth to win the game. He will dig into the right-handed batter's box as Alberto Castillo... Gets set for pitch number 102 on the night. I would not have guessed he had it in him. 40 years old. A guy with major league experience. But 40 years old. Here's the first pitch. Swung on, grounded weakly towards first base. Silverio had a big cut on that one. Didn't get much of it. Ramirez takes it himself. And that's the inning. Castillo works away out of a mini jam, a runner on with two outs. Just the one hit and the one runner left on for the Lemurs. We're through six full at Unitrade Stadium. Still no score in this game.
Breakfast speaks for itself here at Whataburger. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna be fresh. It's almost like when you're a kid and you wake up in the morning, you can smell mom cooking breakfast. I like their hash browns. So my favorite is the honey butter chicken biscuit. I like the taquitos. We have some fresh cracked eggs here. I like these pancakes because they're fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the fact that you can get into Whataburger real fast and bring it on the go. We're cooking breakfast for you at Whataburger. We all know we can accomplish more when we're ready. That's why I've chosen Texas A&M International University. I want a four-year degree and the opportunities that it brings. TAMU has welcomed me and more than 7,000 students from around the world. TAMU empowers me to greatness, ignites my mind, and propels me to my future and my impact. Imagine the possibilities when you're powered by TAMU. Register now for summer and fall. Visit TAMU.edu and get powered. Since Accenting Technologies opened for business in 1998, they have worked to establish solid relationships with their clients. They are set to maintain the highest standards of service and integrity and to perform work of only the highest quality, achieving client satisfaction on every project. They have attained these goals through a tradition of care and professional pride. They serve a wide range of corporations and small business franchises. Accenting Technologies has the tools and expertise for any technical need that your business may have. Call us here in Laredo at 725-2654. That's 725-2654 for Ascending Technologies. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one-of-a-kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. When cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. New pitcher for the Lemurs, which means the day is done for starter Henry Garcia. He went six innings, allowed six hits, but no runs, struck out three, and walked two. To tell you more about the new pitcher and take you the rest of the way, here's Bill Harrington. Thank you very much, Cameron. No score in the ball game. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Ryan Beckman taking over on the hill for the Lemurs. Here's the final line for Garcia. He goes six innings, gives up six hits, no runs, walked two, and struck out three batters in the ball game. So a nice outing here for Henry Garcia, probably his strongest as a starter so far this year for the Laredo Lemurs. So a strong pitcher in his own right. Ryan Beckman taking over on the mound now for the Laredo Lemurs. And he's going to be facing off against the bottom half of the order for the Blasters. So it's Brill, Mesa, and Medina coming up to the plate. And Ryan Beckman, a side-arming right-hander, is going to be throwing up on the mound for the Laredo Lemurs. Beckman has been fabulous. In fact, the Lemurs have three guys that have been out of the bullpen this year. Holly, not Holly, Holly's a starter. Beckman, Brebria, and Hyatt for the Lemurs have all been tremendous. Bunt showing here. Brill pulls back and watches it go by. And it's called a strike. No balls on one strike. Beckman on the season, one win and no losses. A 1.51 ERA through 27 appearances. He has not allowed a run over his last three games. And the 0-1 pitch from the righty. Swung on and chopped up to the second baseman. On the second hop, Taylor will grab it. He'll fire over to first base, and that'll do it for Aaron Brill. So Brill sees two pitches, and he grounds out. And Oscar Mesa will be the next batter. Mesa with a strikeout and a walk to his credit. Henry Garcia, by the way, did hit a batter when he was out there on the mound. So he allowed three free bases, but the Joplin Blasters could not do anything with him. So we're still knotted up at no score. Here's Mesa into the batter's box. So I normally would recap the game right here, but there's really nothing to recap. The pinch. That's low. I guess one of the exciting things was that the Laredo Lemurs turned three double plays in the first three innings. Ten double plays against the Joplin Blasters so far in this series for the Laredo Lemurs. One ball and no strikes. Here's the kick and the throw home. High for a ball. Fastball inside. Yeah, the Lemurs turned a inning-ending double play in the first. Same thing in the second, and another one in the third inning. So Henry Garcia allowed a few base runners on there, but the Lemurs were able to get the double play ball. And by the way, all of them started by Juan Silverio, the third baseman for the Lemurs. The 2-0 pitch. 
Fast ball away. Three balls and no strikes. Now Oscar Mesa looking at a 3-0 count. And Ryan Beckman has to come across the plate. Beckman makes his home in Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm hearing rumors that they're trying to get LaGrave Field up and running for next season up in Fort Worth. Here's the 3-0 pitch. Called a strike as Mesa throws his bat away. He's about a third of the way down to first base, and now he has to come back and grab his bat. So now a 3-1 count. That's the second at-bat in a row where he's done that. Yeah, we saw him do it in his last at-bat, didn't he? I remember that. He thought he had a walk, and he didn't. And he ended up earning one, though, on the next pitch. It turned into a 3-2 count at the time. This is a 3-1 count. Here's the pitch. That's called a strike. He throws his bat away again. When is he going to learn? The more he does it, the more likely the umpire is going to ring him up on it. Marty Bauer, the home plate umpire tonight. and Mesa asking some questions. and The ball might be off the plate slightly, but it's close enough where he would at, should at least wait for the umpire to make the call. Here's the 3-2. Swung on in a liner into center field. On the run is Ty Morrison. He'll put on the brakes and make the catch. So two down. So a nice job there by Ryan Beckman. He falls behind three balls and no strikes, and he gets the out as Oscar Mesa lines out to center field. Here comes Juan Medina. Juan Medina, the number nine batter. See any other highlights going on in the game? Alberto Castillo, the starting pitcher for... Joplin's been tremendous. So far, he has struck out five lemur batters, all with breaking pitches pretty much. Here's the pitch, and Medina takes a strike. A fastball in. So no score in the game. Each team with six hits. Wind blowing out to left field. And I heard a rumor today, just a rumor, that Donald Trump was in town. Here's the L1. And that one misses outside and a check swing. We'll check down with the first base umpire. And he said he did not go around. I guess we just should check on CNN or Fox News or something to see if Donald Trump actually made it down here. One ball and one strike. I understand he was t touring border towns. And this is probably the biggest border town on the border. The 1-1. Inside for a ball. I guess the El Paso border town would probably be pretty big as well. And San, is San Diego actual border town? Is that on the border? Is it smacked up against the border down there in California? Two balls and one strike. The pitch. Swan and a ground ball. Right back to Beckman. Beckman will grab it. Look at the baseball. He reads the signs on it and then throws it over to first base. He gets the out. It's a one to three put out. And that's going to do it for the Joplin Blasters. Three up and three down here. We're going to the bottom of the seventh inning. You're listening to Laredo Lemur's Baseball from a Border Town. Hey, ¿tienes algo que celebrar? ¿Que le salió el primer diente a tu hijo? ¿Que tu abuelita aprendió a tuitear? ¿Que cambiaste tu cheque? La respuesta es la misma. Pues un carne sazo. No importa lo que estés celebrando. Lo que importa es que lo celebres. Pues con un carne sazo de HEB. En HEB encuentras gran variedad de cortes a precios bajos y de buena calidad. Carne sazo. Carne asada con ganas. Solo en HEB. We'd like to imagine that if you're listening to this, it's on a radio in a backyard in between innings. The grass was mowed this morning, and the grill smells like heaven. And what do you know? Your friends just arrived with a 24-pack of Miller Lite, along with a few new friends to enjoy them with. Here's hoping we're right, and you're not just stuck in traffic. Here's hoping it's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. 2015 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. South Texas families never strike out with Driscoll Health Plan. Catch the value-added services we pitch to our Medicaid members. Enjoy a free membership to specific boys and girls clubs. Receive gift cards for completing Texas health care checkups. Restrictions and limitations may apply. Visit us at DriscollHealthPlan.com. Todos sabemos que podemos lograr más cuando estamos listos. Por eso, decidí matricularme en Texas A&M International University. Quiero un título universitario y las oportunidades que me brindará. Tammy U me ha recibido a mí y a 7,000 estudiantes de todo el mundo. Tammy U me impulsa a ser grande, enciende mi mente y hace mi corazón latir. 
Imagina las posibilidades cuando eres impulsado por Chami. Inscríbete ahora para verano y otoño. Visita tamiyu.edu y sé impulsado. 3, 2, 1, number 1. That's Laredo's number 1 Chevy dealer. Family Chevrolet turns the best day ever into the best month ever. 15% off, not good enough, but 25% off, now that makes it the best month ever. With over 600 vehicles available, makes it the best pricing ever. 2015 Equinox, 2015 Traverse, not 15, but 25% off. And the best financing rates for the best month ever, 1.9 interest. Family Chevrolet of Laredo.com. Come see why the deals are always better at Family Chevrolet. Family Chevrolet is the number one volume Chevy dealer for a reason. Every customer rides during our spring cleaning closeout sale with massive price cuts on 600 Chevys. New 2015 Chevy Cruze. How about 25% off MSRP? Wow, that's huge. Or only $199 a month. New 2015 Malibu for only $269 a month. Or 25% off MSRP. Plus two years free maintenance and a 100,000 mile warranty. It's a spring cleaning closeout sale happening now at the number one volume Chevy dealer. Come see why the deals are always better at Family Chevrolet. For the lemurs, Ryan Ortiz is going to lead it off. He walked in his first at bat. He grounded out in his second. No score in the ball game as we slip off to the bottom of the seventh inning. Luis Torino's taking over on the mound for the Joplin Blasters. So new pitchers in on both sides. And he'll fire away. And that pitch is a fastball in there for a strike. So Torino's with a 3-5 and five record and a 5.82 ERA. He was traded and picked up from the Lincoln Salt Dogs for Steve Tinoco. Here's the 0-1. Fastball swung on. Hit well into right field. Going back on the ball is Luna. The ball will just die out there into right field and land in the glove of Omar Luna. That ball had some good loft underneath it, and it looked like it was driven pretty well out there to right field. But the way the wind's blowing tonight, it's going to get knocked down, and that's exactly what happened. Jaudi Valdez is the next batter for the Laredo Lemurs. Chorinos with a record of three wins and five losses. He has a 5.82 ERA coming over from the Lincoln Salt Dong. So this is his first time pitching with Joplin. No score in the game. Bottom of seven. And Cameron and I were looking between innings. Here's the pitch. That is called a strike. The Lemurs have either won a game or have been shut out. And it goes all the way back to July 7th against Wichita. They actually lost to Wichita 5-1, to so they scored a run there, took a loss. Since then, actually 6-1, to one, excuse me. Since then, the Lemurs have either won the game or have been shut out. Absolutely amazing. The 0-1 pitch swung on and fouled off. The shutouts go like this. They end up losing to, to Wichita on the 8th, one nothing. They won against Wichita the next day. So they won 12 to 3. Lost to Amarillo 3 0 on the 10th. Won against Amarillo three games in a row. Then lost to Sioux City 1 0 on the 15th. Won the next day. Lost 2 0 on the 17th. Here's the pitch. Swung on in a line drive. Hit well into left center field. Getting there into the gap is Gomez. He'll make the catch and take away a hit from Valdez. So two down. <laughs> My brain was fixed on base hit. I actually wrote down a base hit in my scorebook there. I just saw a line drive going into the gap, and I thought base hit in my head. I mean, But it ended up being caught. You can go back and finish that in a second, but if you expand that to, say, games in which Lemurs score zero or one runs, going back before the seventh, they lost, uh, let's see, the last game they scored more than one run and lost was July 3rd. They had a batter into the box, Jared Medeiros. He swings and fouls it off. Both of the games on July 7th, they scored one run and lost to Wichita. It's so a, if the Lemurs score two runs since the 4th of July, they've won the game. It's been a weird run. They've also had a 1-0 yeah. win last night. Such a strange series of games. The 0-1 pitch is high. One ball and one strike. I mean, for a team to be shut out that much is not easy to do. And especially this team. This team just has massive hitters on it. One ball and one strike to Maderos. Two outs. No score in the ball game. And the pinch. Breaking ball is high. The Lemurs this year all together have been shut out seven times. They have shut out five teams this year. 
So when they've been on the mound, they have five shutouts. The Lemurs have one complete game thrown this season. That was by Greg Holly. Two balls and one strike. Well, actually, he scratched that. They have two complete games thrown by Greg Holly, but one he took for a loss. Two balls and one strike. Madero's out of the batter's box, taking a practice swing. He has struck out twice. Six hits for each club, no score on the board. The delivery. A fastball low and outside, gloved by the catcher Medina. So Luis Torinos from Venezuela. He's in his ninth professional season in his fourth season in Indy Ball. He's 25 years old. It's kind of odd to see a guy playing nine years and he's only 25 years old. The 3-1 swung on a ground ball up to the shortstop. Back in hand in it is Gonzalez. He'll flip across his body over to first base and it's not going to be in time. In fact, that's going to pull the first baseman Ramirez off of the bag and that's going to be a base hit for Jared Medeiros. So the Lemurs have a base runner. The Lemurs have had a few base runners here tonight. Remember, Kevin Taylor got caught stealing in the second inning. Jayudi Valdez got caught stealing back in the fifth. Ty Morrison was safe at second base on a stolen base attempt in the fifth inning. So the Lemurs with three stolen base attempts tonight, and only one of them had been successful. Madero's at first base, and the pitch home. That's low for a ball to Ty Morrison. Morrison singled in his last at bat. It's Ty Morrison's birthday. Happy birthday, Ty. So one ball and no strikes. And the pitch home. Swung on, and that one I believe was tipped. Nope, the umpire does not say it was tipped. Swung on and missed nonetheless. Now a visit to the mound by the catcher Medina. So Chirinos and Medina talking things over. Ty Morrison, by the way, turning 25 years old. Happy birthday. I remember when I was 25. It was a good time. A 1-1 one, one count, two outs. I was not playing professional baseball at 25. The pitch swung on in a ground ball up the middle, ranging for it, the second baseman Glasser. He dives, it's by him. Around second and heading over to third base is Maderos. He's gonna get in there safely. So runners at the corners for the Laredo Lemurs. And Ty Morrison has his second base hit in the game. So that's going to bring up Devontre Richardson, and the Lemurs have a chance to strike here. Runners at the corners and two down. So a big at bat coming up for Devontre Richardson. Who knows that the Lemurs will have another shot at this. This late in the ball game. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Richardson has two hits today. He's two for three and a quick toss over to first base to get Ty Morrison back in. Well, I did tell you, Morrison has a stolen base. He is very fast. And so far, he's been the only guy to steal off the catcher, Medina, who's got a very strong arm behind the plate. Chorinos out of the stretch. He'll deliver. That one swung on, chopped off the plate. He'll roll up to the third baseman. Brill grabs it, throws. No, he won't get it out of his mitt. The Lemurs are going to score a run. The Lemurs are up 1-0 on an infield hit by Devontre Richardson. Morrison moves up to second base. Richardson has his third single of the game, and this time he picks up an RBI for his efforts. So Maderos with the go-ahead run in the ball game, and that's the first run up on the board for the Laredo Lemurs today. First run up on the board for either team. And Dustin Geiger coming up to the plate now for Laredo. Nicely done there by Jared Maderos hustling in on the play. Devontae Richard picks up his 28th RBI. Both runners go. The throw is going to go to second base. It's going to be offline. Morrison's in at third. He's going to come home as the throw goes into center field. The Lemurs have a 2-0 lead. Nicely done there by manager Pete and Cavilla putting on the double steal with a couple of fast guys on the base pass. So they get the stolen bags, and Ty Morrison's able to come home on the air by the catcher. So an E2 on the play. Morrison has scored a run, and Dustin Geiger at the plate. 2-0 Laredo. 
Runner at third base and still two outs. The pitch is outside, a fastball away. Dustin Geiger on the day has picked up a hit. He's one for three officially. He's looking at a 1-1 count right now. Runner at third base for Laredo. Chorinos. He'll throw home. That's a fastball low. Make it a 2-1 count. On deck for the Lemurs is Dennis Phipps. Lemurs would love to get him up here in this inning. By the way, all this happening with two outs. Madero's reached on a single. Then a single by Ty Morrison. And now a single by Devontre Richardson. And then, of course, the double steal there by the Laredo Lemurs. The 2-1. Low for a ball. Three and one to Dustin Geiger. So he's in control of this at bat right now. He could wait for a fastball right here. And if he gets it where he likes it, he can get a, put a good smack down on it. That's what the kids say. Here's the three one. Fastball on the outside corner. Geiger started to stroll up the first baseline, but got called back by the home plate umpire, Marty Bauer. Bauer likes to do that, likes to call guys back. He likes fishing, I think. I bet he's a fisherman. He likes to let it, let the line out a little bit and then ring it back in. The 3-2, swung on and slashed foul. Look out in the stadium club. Got a heat seeker coming your way. Three balls and two strikes. It's so windy out there, the cameraman cannot stay straight. Either that or he's had too many to drink tonight. Three balls and two strikes. I think he's all right now. He's just dealing with a hangover. The 3-2 pitch. Swan and fouled back. That's the perfect camera angle for when the pitch is thrown right there. If you if you like the third base angle when the pitch is thrown, you, you're, you're dealing with it right now. That is fantastic. Three balls and two strikes to Dustin Geiger. And the 3-2 pitch, breaking ball inside, ball four. And Geiger will head on over to first base. There'll be runners at first and third for the Lemurs. Two runs are already in in the inning, and we'll see if Luis Chorinos is going to be taken out. Well, that is not the manager coming out of the dugout right now. That is Rob Tejeda making a visit up to the hill. He's a former pitcher for the Blasters. He pitched with them at the beginning of the season and then was released and signed up as a pitching coach. So Dennis Phipps is going to get a chance to hit with runners at the corners. Kevin Taylor is on deck. They do have an open bag at second base with two outs, so you might not see Phipps get a good pitch to hit here. Phipps is the slugger for the Laredo Lemurs. One of them, anyway. And you got Ty Morrison and Devontae Richardson right now hitting the cover off the ball. Those two guys are doing a nice job getting on base for the Lemurs and driving runners around. So now the home plate umpire Marty Bauer out there trying to break up the conversation. 2 nothing Laredo, bottom of seven. Well, for a game that was that has no score, or had no score through six innings, we've moved pretty slowly. The first three innings went pretty good. And then all of a sudden, Cameron Songer got on the radio, and next thing you know, he decided to slow things down and Slow the pace down. He wanted to talk a little bit more, I think. <laughs> Here's Dennis Phipps into the batter's box. So a runner at first and a runner at third. Geiger over at first base has five stolen bases on the year, all of them coming with Wichita. He has not tried to steal a base with the Laredo Lemurs. So Phipps at the plate. Let's see if he gets a pitch to hit. Here's the first pitch, a fastball high. So no pitch to hit there. One ball and no strikes to Phipps. Phipps just having a tremendous season. Third in the league in hitting, batting 352. Third in the league in hits with 75 of them. The 1-0 pitch, fastball way outside. Two balls and no strikes. And just as I suspected, I don't think Phipps is gonna get anything good to hit here. It's just gonna be a pitch around. We'll have to wait and see, though. Maybe Chorinos will change his mind halfway through here and try to throw a strike. Here's the 2-0 delivery. Swung on, and that's fouled off. That one was inside. 
but Phipps ended up swinging at it. So make it two balls and one strike. And that's what Torinos is trying to do. He's trying to get Phipps to swing at something off of the plate. I mean, that's the whole goal of a pitch around. You try to throw something close enough to be tempting, but far enough away where it's not, where you can't do anything with it. Here comes a 2-1 pitch. Swan and a fly ball hit down the right field line on the run. Omar Luna, Luna towards the line. He'll reach out for it. The ball is going to land fair. It'll take a hop and go up and over the wall. It's going to be a ground rule double for the lemurs, and that means the lemurs are going to lose a run. Geiger is going to have to head back to third base. A missed opportunity there for Laredo, but Devontae Richardson does score a run. And Geiger has to go to third on the play, and Dennis Phipps gets a ground rule double. And now here comes the manager, Carlos Lescano, out of the dugout. He's going to be taking out Luis Torinos. So that'll do it for Torinos. He has given up three runs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. It's 3 nothing. Lemurs, we'll take a break. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to fewer guys with beer bellies, which led to more women attracted to those guys, which led to dates, second dates, wedding bells, and honeymoons, which led to hubbada hubbada, boom, which led to you. Miller Lights, we invented light beer, and you, you're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Crowd at the bar making you sweat? Uh-huh. Could you use some ice-cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in epic nights, maximum refreshment, great times, awesome memories, high fives, smiles, Rocky Mountain refreshment, Blue Mountain refreshment, quadruple epic refreshment, killer parties, and totally refreshed killer parties. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. When cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Capital Care EMS, located at 1510 Kaila Norte Suite Number 11, invites you to experience a new standard in medical transportation. Servicing Laredo and all surrounding areas, Capital Care EMS provides transports to wound care treatments, HBO treatments, dialysis treatments, doctor's appointments, radiation treatments, chemotherapy treatments, and many more. From emergency medical transport to x-rays and lab work, our state-certified EMTs and paramedics are readily available 24 hours a day when you need them most. Capital Care EMS accepts most most major medical insurances, including Medicare, Medicaid, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Aetna, and many more. Capital Care EMS is locally owned and operated. Call now for your free consultation. 956-712-8911. That's 956-712-8911. Capital Care EMS. Creating a new standard in medical transportation. Capital Care EMS. The official ambulance of your Laredo Lemurs. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Catholic College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. Right now, you could be working towards an exciting new career in business administration. At Kaplan College Laredo, you'll have the chance to gain professional skills and hands-on training. Earning a business degree could open the door to new career opportunities in fields such as accounting, human resources, banking, and marketing. Start on the path to your new career at Kaplan College. Call 800-617-0800. All right, into the batter's box now for the Lemurs is Kevin Taylor. He's facing off against Carlos Fuentes with runners at second and third. And the first pitch is a fastball low and in. So Carlos Fuentes taking the hill. He's only been with Joplin for four games now. This is his fifth appearance. Lemur's up 3-0. Geiger at third base. Phipps is at second. Phipps just picked up a ground rule double that chased off the last pitcher, Luis Torinos. And the 1-0 pitch. Outside. And Cameron Sanger did some research on the Donald coming to Laredo, and he said it's actually going to be tomorrow. So Donald Trump will be coming to Laredo, Texas tomorrow. Interesting. And uh, now they're going to go ahead and intentionally walk Kevin Taylor as the Next pitch goes outside, makes it three balls and no strikes. I just want him to, I just want to see Donald so I can go, you're fired. Here's the 3-0, and that one misses outside. Ball four. 
So the bases are loaded now for the lemurs, and guess who's coming to the plate? Juan Silverio. I don't know if you want to walk Taylor to get to Silverio with the bases loaded. This guy is clutch. A clutch hitter for the lemurs. They have a 3-0 lead, and Juan Silverio coming up to the plate. And that'll, be, that'll make for a little bit of hubbub around Laredo if Donald Trump makes his way down here. Should be pretty interesting. I don't know if he'll end up at Unitrade Stadium tomorrow. That'd be fun if he showed up here. We'd create quite a buzz. Here's the pitch. Silverio takes a breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. No balls and one strike. I have to admit, I have watched a season or two of The Apprentice. It has happened. No balls and one strike. Bases loaded for Laredo. The kick, the throw home. A strike on the outside corner. 0-2 now to Saverio, so he's in a hole. But like I said, he's been clutched this year for the Laredo Lemurs with the bases loaded, with guys in scoring positions, with opportunities to help the Lemurs win games like he did last night. So Saverio with the bases loaded is hitting 400 right now. So the pitcher, Fuentes, looks in, gets the sign. He throws the 0-2. Swung on and missed. That's actually tipped into the glove, says the home plate umpire. But the Lemurs end up sending nine batters to the plate here in the bottom of the seventh inning. They score three runs in the inning, and they pick up four hits, and they earn a few walks there in the inning as well. Two walks to be exact. And we're going to head to the top of the eighth inning with the Lemurs up 3 nothing. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball and a whole lot more. Today at Whataburger, we're cooking the Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. The chicken is hot and fresh. It's got melted Monterey Jack cheese topped with lettuce, tomato, bacon, and then the honey mustard adds a nice sweet flavor to it. All the flavors come together just perfect. I mean, not only do I want to eat it, but I keep wanting to look at it. The crunchiness of the bacon adds a really nice texture. Honey mustard and chicken just go together. You know, sweet and savory, it's a perfect mix. Try the new Honey Mustard Water Chicken Club. Only at Whataburger for a limited time. Hey, Lemurs fans, every Thursday night at Unitrade Stadium is a Thirsty Thursday. Come on out and enjoy cold Miller Lite draft beers for only $1. That's right, beer for a buck. You can get tickets online at LaredoLemurs.com or by phone at 956-7-LEMURS. I'll see you at the ballpark. Texas Inflatable Rentals has Laredo's largest water slides. We are proud to say that we serve the greater Laredo area and supply slip sliding fun for kids of all ages. Texas Inflatable Rentals has a huge selection of inflatables for every budget. And to add to the party, we rent tables, chairs, snow cone machines, popcorn machines, and cotton candy machines that will help take your party to the next level. We also have moonwalks and bounce houses. Contact Texas Inflatable Rentals at 956-436-3909 or at texasinflatablerentals.com and book with the coupon code LEMURS for a 10% discount. That's Texas Inflatable Reynolds, Laredo's largest water slide. Driscoll Health Plan loads the bases. All right, Bill Harrington along with Cameron Songer here at Unitrade Stadium, and it's a 3-0 lead now for the Laredo Lemurs as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Thanks for joining us here tonight. We really enjoy having you on the other side, and hopefully you're enjoying the broadcast. Coming up to the plate is going to be the top of the order. Michael Gonzalez, Mitch Glasser, and Carlos Ramirez. And he'll be facing off against Ryan Beckman. So Beckman still on the mound for the Lemurs for the second straight inning. And the pinch. He throws, and that one misses low and outside. So let's get the scoreboard for you from around the American Association, bring you up to date on what's going on in the rest of the league. One ball and no strikes. And Beckman works out at the stretch all the time. And he throws the 1-0 pitch. Swung on a ground ball over to the left side foul. So the New Jersey Jackals took it to the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks today. A 10-2 final as Fargo takes a trip through the Can-Am League. They've already played these Sussex County Miners. And now they're playing the New Jersey Jackals. They'll have one more team to play before they head on home back to Fargo. One ball and one strike. Wichita 7, Sioux Falls 4. That is a final, so the Lemurs won't be able to gain any ground on Wichita tonight. The 1-1 pitch, swung on and missed. One ball and two strikes. That's if the Lemurs go on and win this evening. And they're up 3 nothing right now. So Wichita wins. St. Paul wins again. 
They win 6-5 to five over Winnipeg. They open up a brand new ballpark. They put together a stacked team. And they just keep on winning. Here's the one-two pitch. Swung it on the ground ball over to the third baseman. Silverio behind the bag at third. It's fair. The strong throw is in time to get the out. Nicely done there by the Lemurs third baseman. A couple of nice plays tonight by Silverio. He has been a stellar addition over there at third. Yeah, if you have not taken a look yet, if you're at home just kind of cruising on the computer right now and you haven't seen CHS Field, go ahead and take a look at it. The St. Paul Saints built a gym up there, and a lot of people are enjoying it. And they are setting attendance records in the American Association right now. Take a look here with their attendance. Yesterday, they had 8,960 in their ballpark. 8,960 for an independent professional baseball game. First pitch to the batter, Mitch Glasser, is on the inside corner for a strike. That one right at the belt. Today they had 8,197 in their ballpark. Over the year, they've had 205,000 plus people go into the yard. The 0 1. Fastball on the outside part of the plate. No balls and two strikes. And the average 7,900 fans per game. So a lot of fun going on up there in St. Paul. And unfortunately, the Lemurs do not get to go to St. Paul this year. But there is a butt hanging out there. And I'll tell you what that butt is next. The 0-2. Swung on a ground ball up the third baseline. Foul. But if the Lemurs make the playoffs and they have a chance to play St. Paul, then the Lemurs might be able to go to that ballpark. So there's that butt. No balls and two strikes. Stop it. <laughs> Cameron's being bad. Making me laugh. Three nothing Laredo. Beckman throws home. Swung on in a liner, a soft liner right at the shortstop, Maderos. And there's two down. Maderos will make the catch. And Carlos Ramirez coming up to the plate. Okay, got to get back to the scoreboard, don't we? We did not finish that. We stopped at St. Paul and I went off on a tangent. I've been known to do that a time or two in my career. The worst time is that when I go off on a tangent, I never get back to the original thought. <laughs> I've done that. Sioux City's up over Lincoln 6-5. to five. Sioux City keeps winning as well, but they do not have a new ballpark. Sioux City has an older ballpark. But it's a nice yard. First time we've ever been there was this year. Here's the first pitch to Ramirez. He takes a strike, a fastball on the outside part of the plate. So Sioux City 6, Lincoln 5. They're in the bottom of the 7th. A couple of finals for you. Grand Prairie beats Amarillo. Grand Prairie has won two in a row. They were on a 12-game losing streak. Here's the 0-1. Swung on a ground ball. Over to the right side, charging Taylor, the second baseman. He'll glove it, he'll throw it, and it's going to be in time to get Ramirez out. Three up and three down. By the way, the other score, Kansas City 4, Gary nothing. That's a final. And your score here, 3 nothing Laredo. We're going to the bottom of the eighth inning. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Looking to travel this summer? If the year-round flights to Las Vegas aren't fit for you, take advantage of Allegiance Direct flights from Laredo International Airport to Orlando. For as low as $119 round trip, you and your family can be in Orlando in two and a half hours. Fly in comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials. Texas Outlaw Grill is a proud sponsor of your Laredo Lemurs, specializing in outlaw delicacies such as the Texican, the Gringo, and the Bandit Hot Dog in their ever-famous barbecue burger. Be the first to try their groundbreaking Cabarito Hamburger and Cabarito Hot Dog. For all to-go orders, catering, and fundraising information, go by 5209 Springfield Suite No. 4 or call 956-771-1919. That's Texas Outlaw Grill. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic, the official team doctors of your Laredo Lemurs. Now with two convenient locations to better serve you. Our north location is located at 9652 McPherson Road, Suite 12. Our south location is located at 5102 State Highway, 359. Laredo Sports Medicine offers an array of services from physical therapy to our newest service, orthopedic surgery. Laredo Sports Medicine Clinic is changing orthopedic care one athlete at a time. Visit our website at laredosportsmed.com for more information. This summer, Allegiant will increase to four weekly flights to Las Vegas, Nevada. If gambling in Vegas isn't your thing, Allegiant is also increasing to two weekly flights to Orlando. Enjoy the Disney theme parks, Legoland, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, and the Kennedy Space Center. Flying comfort from your Laredo International Airport. Visit Allegiant.com for details and specials.
All right, so 7-8-9 in the batting order for the Laredo Lemurs. Ryan Ortiz deleted off. Carlos Fuentes stays in the ball game for the Joplin Blasters. 3-0 Laredo. So Ortiz into the batter's box, a former, former AAA member with the Oakland A's, part of the Sacramento Rivercats. You'll see a pitch miss inside. So when Cameron's on, I like to cruise around and look at things around Major League Baseball and see what's going on in Major League Baseball and around Minor League Baseball and just kind of see if there's anything interesting out there. The 1-0 swung on a line drive into right center field. It's going to drop for a hit. So Ryan Ortiz with a single. His first hit of the day, he's now one for three. And he's picked up his third hit as a Laredo Lemur. And he walked back in the second inning. So officially one, uh, one for three today. So I ran across something that I found kind of interesting that the Fresno, Grizz Fresno Grizzlies are doing. Fresno, by the way, is a AAA affiliate of the Houston Astros. And if you're a fran fan of tacos, and who isn't, right? If you're a fan of the taco, then turn up the radio right now or whatever you're listening to us on. Because the Fresno Grizzlies for a day are going to be called the Fresno Tacos. Into the batter's box goes J. Udi Valdez with a runner at first. And the pinch is a strike on the inside corner. That's right. They're taking the theme jerseys to a whole nother level. They're actually going to be wearing jerseys that say tacos across the front. And they have a hat that is gold, green, and white. And has a taco on the hat. Makes me hungry just for tacos right now. No balls and one strike. So an interesting uniform. The Fresno Grizzlies, by the way, do not wear that color scheme. They do not wear green, yellow, and white. The 0-1 pitch. Swung on a ground ball over to the right side. Glasser will field it. He'll throw to Gonzalez for one at second. The throw back to first base is in time to turn the double play. And look at that. Joplin has turned to double play. So 4-6-3 double play. And that makes two outs. Jared Medeiros will be the next batter. So the big taco day out there in Fresno, in case you're out in California and you want to help celebrate, it's going to be on August 6th. It's actually going to be taco truck throwdown number five. But it's going to happen on August 6th. Apparently they have a, an occasional taco truck throwdown there in Fresno where they have a bunch of taco trucks come to the ballpark as the first pitch to Medeiros is fouled away. If you're not living in a big city, and not that Fresno is huge, but... It's out there in California where there's a a food truck craze going on right now. And I think that's going on pretty much in every big city around the nation. No balls and one strike, but especially out in California. Taco trucks are the thing. Food trucks are the thing. The old one pitch is low. One ball and one strike. So the Grizzlies, they wear the colors of black and orange they used to be a Giants affiliate so when they took the name Fresno Grizzlies they made their colors black and orange to help represent the San Francisco Giants but they're now an Astros affiliate here's the 1-1 one -one pitch swung on and fouled off the San Francisco Giants picked up with the Sacramento River Cats because the River Cats are a little bit closer than Fresno is to San Francisco one ball and two strikes so and that's been a big benefit for the Sacramento River Cats to be a Giants affiliate now instead of an A's affiliate. Not that the A's weren't popular in the Sacramento area, but the Giants, of course, with all their success lately, they're a lot more popular. One ball and two strikes. And the pitch is high for a ball. Two balls and two strikes now to Jared Medeiros. 3 nothing, Laredo. So if you're out there in California and you want to check out the taco truck throwdown, you can do so on August 6th as the Fresno Grizzlies will be wearing their taco uniforms. Madero swings and misses. He strikes out. He strikes out for the third time tonight here against the Joplin Blasters. The Lemurs are going to head to the top of the ninth inning and going to look to shut this one down. They're up 3 nothing right now. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Miller invented light beer, the original light pilsner, and that changed everything. This led to people wondering, L-I-T-E, that's how you spell light? Which led to people thumbing through their dictionaries. Which led to, there's got to be a better way to look up words. Which led to the invention of spell check. Which led to better resumes, promotions, celebrations, and happy hour. Miller Lite, we invented light beer and happy hour. You're welcome. 12 ounces contain 96 calories, 3.2 carbs, 1 protein, 0 fat. Great beer, great responsibility. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Do you want to sit in a car for seven hours, risk a flat tire, traffic or highway construction delays? Fly direct from Laredo International Airport to Dallas-Fort Worth on American Airlines. From Dallas, you can change planes and take a flight to Tokyo, London, or even Rio de Janeiro. 
With four daily arrivals and departures, American Airlines is sure to have a connection that works best for you. So avoid spending hours in the car or risk an accident on the highway or even a flat tire. Fly in comfort from Laredo International Airport. Visit AA.com for details and to book a reservation. Unitrade continues to provide solutions in foreign trade through a highly satisfactory customs brokerage service. Unitrade has quality trained personnel devoted to the highest level of customer service. For all your transportation, distribution, and consolidation needs, it's Unitrade. There's a reason why Popeyes creates some of the best tasting chicken in the world. We were born in New Orleans, Louisiana, the land of good fun and great cooking. Spicy flavor is a way of life in New Orleans, and everything we make reflects it. From our Popeye's bona fide chicken and handcrafted tenders to our homestyle mashed potatoes with Cajun gravy and our soft buttery biscuits, everything we make is made with care and served up fresh, only at Popeye's. Chavarria's Plumbing's the number one choice for any plumbing problem. Chavarria's is a full-service company with up-to-date technology trained professionals. With over 30 years of service to the community, Chavarria's is still growing strong. Visit chavarriasplumbing.com and go lemurs! Falcon Bank and the Laredo Lemurs are a winning combination. At Falcon, they know what counts. Personalized service, attention to detail, and genuine commitment to helping customers achieve their dreams. Falcon Bank, guided by faith, grounded by family, and committed to you. Need a little spark in your life? Then come on out to Unitrade Stadium for Friday Night Fireworks. Tickets start as low as $5, and you'll get to see great baseball and great fireworks all in one night. To get tickets, call 956-7-LEMURS or go online at LaredoLemurs.com. I'll see you at the ballpark. Core Business Solutions is a proud sponsor of Lemurs Baseball. Core Business Solutions services the 17 southernmost counties of Texas, as well as areas of northern Mexico. They offer a wide range of high-tech solutions for businesses and organizations. Make Core Business Solutions your solution today. John Breria taking the mound for the Laredo Lemurs as we go to the top of the ninth inning. So Breria looking to close down the blasters. It's going to be Taylor, Luna, and Gomez coming up to the plate. So top of nine, Lemurs can get the victory here. If John Breria could put away the Joplin blasters. And he's done a nice job of putting teams away so far this year. As Breria throws home, and that one swung on a miss. A late swing there by the batter, Jake Taylor. He's one for three on the day. Breberia on the season with a five win and two loss record, a 1.33 ERA through 30 games. He has eight saves on the season. He'll wind and deliver on the 0-1. And that one misses inside. One ball and one strike, a fastball from Breberia. Breberia pitched in yesterday's game and picked up the victory. As Greg Hawley went eight complete, and then Breberia came on and shut down the blasters in the ninth. Here's the 1-1 pitch, low for a ball. The Lemurs went on to win in walk-off fashion in the bottom of the ninth inning. They won one nothing. So the Joplin Blasters are in danger of being shut out in back-to-back -back games here. And the Blasters were shut out for the first time yesterday all season long. Two balls and one strike. So now Jake Taylor going to step back out of the batter's box and get right back in. He's got a very wide stance. I don't know how he hits like that. His feet are very spread apart. And the 2-1 delivery. Swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes. I guess the biggest thing for him when he stands in the batter's box with his feet so spread apart is he's trying to keep his head level. That's a big thing for hitters. You want to make sure your head's not moving around too much. And if you have too wide of a step, sometimes your head goes on a different plane. It'll go down a little bit if you step forward. Here's the 2-2 delivery. And that is in called strike three. Excuse me. And we've dealt with it all night. The home plate umpire does have a late call. And this time he rings up Jake Taylor on called strike three. And Omar Luna coming up to the plate. So Luna going to bat from the right side as he always does. He's two for three on the day with a couple of singles. The Lemurs in shutout games this year, they have won five of them and have lost seven. So if they can get this one tonight, that'll... Make them have six shutouts under their belt as the pitch to Omar Luna misses up. And I don't think the Lemurs care one way or the other if it's a shutout or not. The bottom line for them is a victory. One ball and no strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled back. But the Lemurs doing great in the ERA category as a team right now. In fact, 
not only are they doing good there, but they're also doing good in the walk category. They're currently sec had the second lowest walks in the league. They've only given up 155 coming into tonight's ball game, and Garcia walked two batters, so add two onto that. As the next pitch is fouled back to the screen by Omar Luna, he's looking at a 1-2 count now. Yeah, the Lemurs start the day with a 3.26 ERA. That's the second best ERA, only to St. Paul, who's got a three even ERA. So their pitching staff is off the hook, and the Laredo Lemurs pitching staff also off the hook. That's what the kids say. Here's the one two. Swung on a ground ball. One hopped right back to Berbia. He'll leap in the air, grab it, run halfway over to first base, underhand toss to Geiger, and the Lemurs will get the second out. So two down, and Yasir Gomez will be the last shot for the Joplin Blasters to try to keep the game alive. And so this has probably been the most impressive Lemurs pitching staff from top to bottom as far as starters and relievers go. Now the Lemurs back in 2012 had a core of relievers that were tremendous. In fact, one of them's in the big leagues, Chaz Rowe. He's playing with the Baltimore Orioles as the first pitch to Gomez is low. So one ball and no strikes, three nothing Laredo. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. Lemurs trying to pull down the win. But top to bottom for Laredo, this is probably the best start, uh, pitching staff that they've had. The next pitch is low. The starters have been really well. The starters got off to a little bit of a bumpy start, but they've really leveled down and are doing a nice job now for the Laredo Lemurs. And the relief pitchers have been tremendous all season long. Two balls and no strikes. So Brebria right back up on the hill. And he'll throw the 2-0 pitch. Fastball high and away. Make it three balls and no strikes. Now Berberia has to work backwards to the batter, Yasir Gomez. Of course, Gomez can't do any damage by himself. He has to get on base, and then the guy on deck would be the guy that would, could do some damage as the next pitch misses outside. So that's ball four to Gomez. And Aaron Brill's coming up to the plate. Brill is hit into a double play, has flown out to right, and has grounded out. Berberia on the season with that walk right there. It's only his eighth walk given up. He has thrown in 33 and two-third innings to start the night. So you had the two outs here, and he's got 34 and a third innings under his belt with eight walks. 3 nothing, Laredo. Last game of a three-game set between the two clubs. The pitch, low and outside. So Brebria struggling to find the strike zone right now. Lemurs can get a sweep here tonight with this win. And that'll be their second sweep against Joplin if they can lock it down. The runner goes from first. The pitch is inside, and now timeout's called. Ortiz is going to go talk things over. And that's going to be a defensive indifference as the runner takes... Second base, so no stolen base there. So even Mike Meyer is going to go out there and talk things over. So Brebria, Meyer, and the catcher Ryan Ortiz all out there talking it over, and Mike Meyer going to help. Brebery, I get back into the strike zone. So the next batter, or Aaron Brill, is the same batter. He's got a 2-0 count. The Lemurs this year have swept two teams. So they've swept Joplin once. Two balls and no strikes. Trying to remember the other team that they got a sweep again. Oh, yes, the Lincoln Salt Dogs. Here in this ballpark, the 2-0. This is inside. Three balls and no strikes with the runner at second base. So Brebria has missed seven straight times here. And he'll throw. That's called a strike on the inside corner right at the letters. So Brebria tries to get back into the strike zone. Throws one there. It's three balls and one strike. Remember the lemurs and out away from the win. And the 3-1 pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Also, if the Lemurs can pull out the victory, they will put together another four-game winning streak. They've had a couple of those this year. 
They've had a few three-game winning streaks as well this season, but the four-gamer has come up a couple of times. Three balls and two strikes. So a full count to Brill. Runner at second. Two outs. The pitch. Low and outside. A fastball from Brebria. And another walk. And that's going to bring the tying run to the plate in Oscar Mesa. So now things get serious here. So now the Joplin Blasters can do some damage. But Brebby, if he gets the ball over the plate, he's tough to hit. Of course, Joplin's going to be a little patient up there. You would think that Oscar Mesa is going to go up there and take a strike. So a runner at first and a runner at second base. Here's the pitch. A strike at the letters on the outer third of the plate. 0-1. Well, good way for Brebby to open up that at bat. Oscar Mesa 0 for 2 with a walk. He goes into a deep crouch, does Mesa. The 0 1 pitch. Swan and a ground ball up the middle. Hits off the leg of Brebry. He has to try to run it down. Medeiros will get to it. He's not going to have a play anywhere, and the bases are going to be loaded. So Brebry had it hit off of his leg and went over towards the second baseman, but Taylor was breaking on the play to go up the middle, so he wasn't home. And that'll be a base hit for Mesa. Three nothing Laredo, and the tying run now is at first base, and Juan Medina will be the batter. Manager Pete Gavilla was at the top of the dugout for a second there. I think he was giving some defensive instruction. Three nothing Lemurs. The pitch, a fastball on the outside part of the plate. No balls and one strike. So the blaster is going to make this thing interesting. And the 0-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. A big swing there. Going for it was Juan Medina. He saw one at the letters and decided to try to unleash, but he missed it. So now it's 0-2. Brebri is back in the strike zone. Throwing some tempting delights up there for Juan Medina. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball, swung on and missed, held on to by Ortiz. That's strike three, that's the ball game. The Lemurs have shut out the Joplin Blasters two days in a row. They earn the sweep against Joplin, and the Lemurs have won four straight. Wow, nice job there tonight by the Laredo Lemurs. They score their three runs, they get the victory, and they are gonna celebrate here this evening just a little bit. That's going to do it. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Come back with a post-game show. You're listening to Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Thanks for joining us for Laredo Lemurs Baseball. Brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Driscoll Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Valley Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Gerra Communications, HEB, High Gadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony League, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Place, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, Tamu Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade 40, Water River of Alice. The Laredo Lemurs Post Game Show is coming your way next. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Andre Richardson, the player of the game. You went three for four with a one bad in and ended up being the game winning RBI. Also came around to score. How'd you feel out there? Uh, it took you guys a little while to get started, get some runs going. Uh, how important was it for you guys to be patient to play? Uh, it was, it was uh, definitely a uh, lot nice to sleep and we did, we did pretty well. Uh, we had uh, Henry out there uh, down with the bear pitcher, so uh, we ended up uh, coming to Henry now. So, uh, All right, one more question. Don't go yet. 
a fourth straight wins for the Lakers. So feel like the team is playing its best baseball right now, coming into a big four-game set against Wichita. And uh, so feel like you guys are ready for this big four-game set coming up tomorrow. Oh, okay. We're going to play this game today. It's a game, and we're going to play All right, thanks, the Monterey fans. The Lakers are back in action tomorrow night, starting a four-game series against the division leading Wichita Wing. That's 731st pitch. We'll see you then. We all know we can accomplish more when we're ready. That's why I've chosen Texas A&M International University. I want a four-year degree and the opportunities that it brings. TAMU has welcomed me and more than 7,000 students from around the world. TAMU empowers me to greatness, ignites my mind, and propels me to my future and my impact. Imagine the possibilities when you're powered by TAMU. Register now for summer and fall. Visit TAMU.edu and get powered. Since Accenting Technologies opened for business in 1998, they have worked to establish solid relationships with their clients. They are set to maintain the highest standards of service and integrity and to perform work of only the highest quality, achieving client satisfaction on every project. They have attained these goals through a tradition of care and professional pride. They serve a wide range of corporations and small business franchises. Accenting Technologies has the tools and expertise for any technical need that your business may have. Call us here in Laredo at 725-2654. That's 725-2654 for Ascending Technologies. Sweating through another barn burner at your team's bar? Sure am. Wish you had some ice cold refreshment? You bet. Then Coors Light may be right for you. Could result in meeting new people. Epic fist bumps, epic forearm bumps, epic or chest bumps, touchdown dancing, break dancing, line dancing, dancing like nobody's watching, awesome refreshment, refreshment for the win, and one of a kind Rocky Mountain cold refreshment. Ask your bartender for Coors Light today. Definitely. <laughs> When cold refreshment calls, Coors Light answers. Frost brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. With great beer comes great responsibility. Hey, ¿tienes algo que celebrar? ¿Que le salió el primer diente a tu hijo? ¿Que tu abuelita aprendió a tuitear? ¿Que cambiaste tu cheque? La respuesta es la misma. Pues un carnesazo. No importa lo que estés celebrando, lo que importa es que lo celebres. Pues con un carnesazo de HEB. En HEB encuentras gran variedad de cortes a precios bajos y de buena calidad. Carnesazo. Carne asada con ganas. Solo en HEB. We'd like to imagine that if you're listening to this, it's on a radio in a backyard in between innings. The grass was mowed this morning, and the grill smells like heaven. And what do you know? Your friends just arrived with a 24-pack of Miller Lite, along with a few new friends to enjoy them with. Here's hoping we're right, and you're not just stuck in traffic. Here's hoping it's Miller time. Great beer, great responsibility. 2015 Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now it's time for the Laredo Lemurs Post Game Show. Laredo Lemurs Baseball is brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashton's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, Driscoll Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Family Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Guerra Communications, HEB, I Gadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony League, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Flakes, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, Tamu Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade 40, Whataburger of Alice. Now here's Bill Harrington with Laredo Lemur's Post Game Show. Hi, Lemur's fans. Thanks for sticking around for the Post Game Show. Bill Harrington and Cameron Songer here at Unitrade Stadium as the Lemur's win tonight by a final score of 3 nothing. They shut the Joplin Blasters down again. That's two games in a row that the Lemur's have shut out the Joplin Blasters. Lemurs won last night 1-0 in a walk-off victory in the bottom of the ninth. Today they score their runs in the seventh inning against Joplin for the 3-0 win. So it was three runs on 11 hits and no errors tonight by the Lemurs. No runs on seven hits and one error tonight by the Joplin Blasters. The winning pitchman, pitcher is Ryan Beckman. The loser is Luis Torinos and the save goes to John Berbria here this evening. And the game was played in two hours and 55 minutes in front of a crowd of 924 people 
here at Unitrade Stadium. So the Lamers with another nice win, and they sweep the Joplin Blasters. That's the second time this year they have swept Joplin, and they are now 8-2 and two against the Blasters this season. So throughout 10 games, the Lamers are 8-2 and two against Joplin, and I believe with the victory here tonight, just take a quick look at the standings. I think that puts the Lemurs a half game up over the Blasters in the American Association South Division. Yeah, indeed it does. The Lemurs jump ahead as I confirm with the standings. They are 32 and 26, and Joplin drops to 30 and 25. So the Blasters are falling. They're three and seven over their last 10, and the Lemurs are eight and two over their last 10, and so are the Wichita Wingnuts. And each team with a winning streak right now, both Wichita and Laredo, has a winning streak. So let's go over the seventh inning, how the Lemurs scored there. As there was two outs in the inning when Jared Medeiros came up to the plate. He came up to the plate, picked up a single. And then Ty Morrison would single to put runners at first and second base for Laredo. Then Devontae Richardson, he would single. That would bring home Medeiros. Medeiros actually would be on third. I'm sorry, there'd be runners at first and third. Medeiros would score from third base on the Richardson single. Richardson picking up his third hit of the game there in his first RBI, and the Lemurs were up 1-0. Then Dustin Geiger would come up to the plate. During the Geiger at bat, there would be a double steal, steal by Richardson and Morrison. The throw would go to second base to try to get Richardson out, but it would go into center field, and that would allow Ty Morrison to come in to score on the air. So the Lemurs were up 2-0 at that time. Geiger ended up earning a walk, and then Dennis Phipps came up to the plate. He doubled to drive in Devontae Richardson from third base, and that gave the Lemurs a 3-0 lead, and that would be the final score of the ballgame. So a nice job there by the Lemurs to put up those runs in the seventh inning. The starting pitchers tonight did a nice job on both ends. Henry Garcia, the starter for Laredo, went six innings, gave up six hits, no runs. He walked two and struck out three. And the starting pitcher, Alberto Gonzalez, for Joplin, went six innings. He allowed six hits, no runs. He walked two and struck out five. And Alberto Gonzalez, or Castillo, remember, is 40 years old. So a 40-year-old out there doing the job with the professionals. So a nice job there. Ryan Beckman was fabulous tonight for the Lemurs as he worked the seventh and the eighth inning. He was solid, retired the side in order each and every time. So all around, the Laredo Lemurs were good tonight picking up the runs when they had to and having the pitching come up very, very strong. So the Lemurs pitching the second best staff right now in the American Association. They are looking very, very strong. And the Lemurs hitters getting those timely hits as they did tonight. So quickly, we'll take a look at the scoreboard from around the American Association. We already took a look at the standings, so we just need to take a look at the scoreboard now. As the Fargo-Moorhead Redhawks are on a trip to the Can-Am League, they are playing the New Jersey Jackals, and the Jackals won 10-2. Wichita 7, Sioux Falls 4. That's a final. That was a day game today up in Wichita. St. Paul 6, Winnipeg 5, and Sioux City and Lincoln. They're still playing. They're in the top of the ninth inning. Lincoln's up 8-7. to seven. Grand Prairie over Amarillo 7-4. to four. Grand Prairie's now won two games in a row after their 12-game losing streak. Kansas City wins over Gary 4-0. And, of course, your final score here, Laredo 3, Joplin nothing. So we're going to be back at it tomorrow night, but a whole new team is going to be in town. In fact, it's going to be the South Division leader, the Wichita Wingnuts. So the Lemurs are going to have a chance to face the guys right in front of them for the division lead here in the American Association. Of course, Wichita coming to town for the first time this year in Laredo. They have a record of 35 wins and 23 losses. The Lemurs at 32 and 26. So they're three games out. The Lemurs in Wichita will play a four-game set coming up as they go into the break on the 27th and the 28th for a couple of days off. So it's going to be all-out war here on the field at Unitrade Stadium over the next couple of days. So if you're in town, I highly suggest you come on out to the ballpark. Should be a whole lot of fun between these two clubs. They usually put on a good show. Both teams with really good pitching staffs, by the way. The Wichita Wingnuts pitching staff and the Laredo Lemurs pitching staff. Wichita is the fourth team in pitching, and the Lemurs are currently the second best team in pitching. So it should be some good pitching matchups going on here at Unitrade Stadium over the next couple of days. Well, that's going to do it here for the broadcast tonight. For my buddy Cameron Songer, my name is Bill Harrington. We'll see you again tomorrow night, 7.15 for the pregame show, 7.30 for the first pitch here at Unitrade Stadium. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Laredo Lemurs Baseball, brought to you by Popeye's Chicken, AEP Texas, Armadillo Homes, Ascending Technologies, Ashley's Furniture of Laredo, Capital Care EMS, Chavarias Plumbing, Core Business Solutions, 
Driscoll Health Plan, Falcon International Bank, Family Chevrolet, Gold's Gym, Gerda Communications, HEB, iGadget Repair Center, Kaplan College, Laredo International Airport, Laredo Pony Lee, Laredo Sports Medicine, Mike's Paint Place, Pepsi, Pro Mega Signs, Southern Distributing, Southern Sanitation, Talk and Talk Wireless, Tamu Housing and Residence, Texas Farm Bureau, Texas Inflatables, Texas Outlaw Grill, Tokyo Garden, Total Termite Pest and Control, Unitrade Boarding, Whataburger of Alice. Join us next time for all your Laredo Lemurs action.